Hello and welcome once again to more great VFL action in pro football. This week it's round 16, we're at Cadinia Park, which is a long drive for St Kilda fans, particularly if they're low on petrol, because the Saints tackle Geelong, 10th versus 12th on the VFL ladder. Well, John Devine needs a change of luck. He's had a shocking run recently, and now with a run-in that's been so well publicised between he and Gary Ablett at last squashed, perhaps he can get down to the business of playing football. He went into this game without his star, Gary Ablett, and the Saints were pretty confident. Let's join our commentators at Cadinia Park in Jack Edwards and Peter McKenna for the opening bounce. On Seven's big league, Cardinia Park, Geelong, the day which is affected by petrol rationing, not a very big crowd, but a great day for football. Tapped out by Mossop, Geelong going forward, the ball's picked up and shot out, a hand pass comes back to Couch, that hand pass coming off the hands of Drum, down to the full forward zone, Burke had the chance to take the mark, only 30 metres out from goal, couldn't hold the ball and we'll see a bounce taking place, the position I call 30 metres out from Geelong's goal. Not a bad day for football, Pete. The ground a little bit heavy. A uh, great day, but uh, watching the seconds, they handled it pretty well. There's a flying pot shot at the goals. That was by, uh, let's see if we can pick him up at ten and a half forward as he turns around. That's a new young player. That's uh, Peter White who had that pot shot and put it out in the full. The kick comes back to half back. Couch has dropped the sitter. In goes John Moss up on that half forward line, close to the boundary. Joffa Cunningham is tackled, and the umpire, a young umpire, and uh, first season of league football, Brian Sheehan is uh, deliberated on that one in fact and said that it was a play on decision, eventually was over the line. Now here's uh, Barker, who had a great game last week, over to Gamble. Gamble the hand pass to Mace, Mace copped it high. In fact, the, uh, now he's playing the advantage rule. Daryl Cunningham kicks wide, up to half forward, over the back was Lenahan. Comes wide, a chance now to the half forward flank as we see a hand pass to Daryl Cunningham, a further hand pass across and it's a pot shot at the goal by low and i think the young fella might have kicked the goal he has and what a great start for the saints and a great start indeed he looks a fairly big player too that uh, young player you called there in low he's a very big player peter playing at center half forward i think he'd uh, only be about 17 or 18 years of age uh, jack stewart low and uh, well, what gonna a great be a big, start gonna be a big fella when he's 19 then if that's the case because from here where we're sitting number 50 on screen Huge. now He's a very big boy, but a good start for St Kilda. Don't think there's any breeze advantage. Doesn't appear to be, but St Kilda leads along by one goal. Tapped out by Mossop again. Kicked by Burns, didn't go very far. Hand pass comes home. Oh, doesn't actually come out of the pack yet. Darrell Cunningham once again in the action, getting the kick moving, and that kick coming up to the half-forward zone or wing position where the mark has been taken over there by Cole. Cole on the left foot going into the half forward zone. Turner under the ball, can't take the mark. The ball thumped to turf, a chance for Christensen. Uh, Marty Christensen's hand pass to Buse, not a good one. It comes back to Drum, he's caught, he's in trouble. Oh. But out of it, well, his hand pass to Christensen. It comes in once again, and a uh, little kick going downfield to the half forward zone. Burke tried to tap it further afield. Whitcomb's on the scene, he gets a boot to it, and he's put it through for a goal for Geelong. So, plenty of action down here at Cardinia Park. The game's only been going three minutes. Each side has scored a goal, so scores level on Seven's big league. Well, there's Murray Whitcomb, uh, you see on screen. A great game in the Army Reserve Cup at uh, the Lakeside Oval last week on the wing. Had about 30 or 40, 30 to 35 possessions. And uh, back in the senior side, good to see him back. And good play by Burke on that occasion, Jack, to tap it over the back, knowing that Whitcomb was coming past. Up they fly, tapped out by Mossop. Oh, the tackle was a bit high. Was that drum got the hand pass back to Bright? Uh, he moves it now, or he's going to move it in a minute from the wing position into the half forward zone. The kick's up high, the mark is dropped by Elphinstone. Nearly knocked his own teammate down in Keel. The ball now with Mace, but he couldn't get it. Neil picks up for Geelong and kicks high. Up to the half forward zone it travels. No mark will be paid. Over the back, it's Turner picking up for Geelong and got another one for the Cats. So two in the space of two minutes for Geelong. Geelong leads St Kilda on seven's big league. Geelong two goals, St Kilda one goal. 
Well, what a tremendous start. There's Michael Turner, the captain of the Cats, and uh, experience. He waited over the back, and uh, nine times out of the ten, the, the ball will hit the ground. He's uh, encouraging his teammates, as you can see him there on screen. And a great start to this game. Three goals, and we've only been playing four minutes. So, uh, well, it's almost a goal a minute. Yeah, it's pretty good stuff here at Cardinia Park. Not a big crowd, as I said before, but a great day for football. Ball put down. Mossop, the favourite, takes the ball. Got a hand pass back to Boss, who gets a kick into the uh, half-forward zone. And the mark is well taken down there by McConville of St Kilda. Going into the wing position, looking for Keel. The ball near the boundary line. Might beat him there too. And the umpire indicates a boundary throw-in. On the wing position, out of side. The throw-in will take place. Scores on the scoreboard, showing Geelong two goals. St Kilda one goal. And it's on the, in the neutral position, the outer side wing. Now a hand pass over the top. Geelong try to come forward again. Yes, as we said, down towards half forward. Gamble tried to punch it away. McConville, hand pass back to uh, Mark Gamble, who's had a very good year after coming across from Frankston. It's on centre wing as the hand pass. Further afield. A kick on the left foot comes right down towards half forward. The ball is thumped away. Back it comes to Burns. Burns looking for Jeff Cunningham, and he finds him on centre wing. Geoffrey Cunningham about to what is about 40 metres out from goal from where he'll take the shot at goal. You've often said Peter's not the best shot at goal, but we'll see how he goes with this Well, occasion. he's not the greatest kicker in the world, uh, Jeff, but sometimes kicking for goal, he improves. As we see, a high ball, and it's uh, a lovely-looking kicker, actually, and it floats through for a goal. So what a great start to this game. Two goals apiece to both sides, and we've only been playing five and a half minutes into the first quarter as we see Jeff Cunningham striding back on uh, screen yes this game should be all fought before the uh, game actually started it would be an even game that could change of course as the hours tick by but at present it's very even 12 points apiece two straight goals each and i don't pete i can't see any actual wind advantage can no. you the trees don't seem to be moving much outside the ground no they can score goals either end of the ground and the ground uh, pretty good considering the amount of rain we've had they're handling the ball beautifully i think it's dried of, out since we first saw it certainly it. has it's a uh, couple of little mud patches but uh, certainly no water lying around umpire ross castle putting the ball down to start the game again two goals apiece seven's big league from cardinia park Ball tapped down to Burns, he's trying to break away, can't get very far. Couch hand pass comes out now and that kick is smothered by Whitcomb, or Whitcomb's kick is smothered. Picked up by Burns, it comes back into the half forward zone. There is a chance now for Narkel to get the ball moving, looking for a teammate on the outer side, half forward Frank, but he can't do much with it. And we'll see a bounce taking place about 55 metres out from St Kilda's goal. Half forward Frank, uh, Whitcomb was the player for Geelong, number 18, who came in and pounced on top of the football but uh, there's a uh, big low doing the ruck work there uh, Stuart Lowe who kicked the first goal of the game for the Saints and eventually the ball is forced over the line two goals apiece at this stage there he is again number 50 Stuart Lowe about six foot one he's only 17 years of age against big John Mossop so a bit of height there here's a the chance Trevor Barker has been in great form hooks it back to Lockett and Malarkey yes. uh, great mark taken by Lockett Gary Malarkey he tried to spoil, but Lockett too big, too strong. And Gary Malarkey hasn't been in great form in recent weeks. He'll have to get a run at his opponent and try and thump it away. Yeah, well, Lockett had the, put, with the arms out in front, the backside out at the back, and held Malarkey out while he took the mark. So St Kilda should go to a goal lead here over Geelong, which they do now, as Lockett puts the first of his goals through. I say the first of his goals. I assume he'll get more than one. Uh, Geelong on two goals, St Kilda on three goals. You're on Sevens Big League, eight minutes into the first term at Cardinia Park. Well, Gary Malarkey had a very torrid time, of course, at this same ground last week against Brian Taylor. Taylor kicked seven goals, and, uh, of course, he had a, his work cut out a couple of weeks ago against Kappa also, so he's coming up against some pretty good full forwards. But, you know, Gary's at the end of getting towards the end of his career, and he's been a very good player over the years. There's Couch on the left foot towards half forward over the back of the pack a chance for oh. Collins gets thumped out of the way over to Frawley with a handball Frawley wide wide looking for Trevor Barker who takes a lovely mark and he's in everything at the moment hey, Trevor Barker. Collins is still hurt down there in the half back after even that real good bump from Burke he's still in trouble Mace taking the mark off the boot of Barker he's on the half forward flank on the outer side of the ground there's the kick off the boot of Mace up toward uh, 
there. No one can take that. It was Grant who flew in the pack. It's on the turf there in that middle of that pack. Getting hurried away to the half-back zone. But it's Olsen Kilda and Nilly got messed up between Ford and Mace. Ford hand passes to Barker. His little short chip pass and finds a teammate too. And that mark has been taken well by Bradley Gotch. Possibly the smallest man on the ground. He's about 50 metres out. He'll kick from just inside the 50 metre mark. He's not a bad kick as a rule. And as we said, no breeze to up to worry the players' kicking abilities today. It's on its way, it's true. Another goal, when well, are they going to kick it behind? I'm not too sure. St Kilda now, four straight goals. Geelong, two straight goals on seven's big league. Well, a great start by the Saints. There's John Collins on screen. Uh, the ex-North Melbourne player, he copped a very, very heavy bump on that occasion before the ball was transferred to the forward line. And uh, Trevor Barker doing particularly well. I'm just trying to pick up exactly where he's playing he's actually starting off in the center he's probably playing as a ruck rover i think and that's good coaching by graham jelly because barker's got a ton of talent there's alistair ford against john mossop it's knocked away kicked away by gamble towards the half forward line narco was there knocked away by marty christensen to mark boss boss from the center of the ground a long driving kick down towards half forward but no one went for it except mcconville it's knocked away to gamble in goes the young fella for Geelong there and Peter White pounces on the ball and umpire Brian Sheehan will come in and bounce it. Centre half forward for Geelong. Bounce taking place as Peter told you. Centre half forward about 40 metres out for Geelong. Ford got up and got the tap. Comes to McConville who goes out wide to the outer wing position looking for a teammate. Boss is there as is Mossop. Each waiting for the other to pick it up I thought. Mossop with the ball. It's right be over the boundary line now. Yeah, they messed that up between them Pete. I certainly did. I think that they, Mossop and Boss did the wrong thing there. I think they should have left it to Boss. He's the he's got more agility than John Mossop has, but they left it to Mossop and he messed it up. There's uh, Neville Bruns, a he high ball towards half forward. Players set themselves. That's a nice mark over the back, and he's been in great form in recent weeks. Peter McConville. Once again, there was indecision there between the Geelong players. McConville took advantage of that and goes for a short pass. Not a good pass. It's over the boundary line, not on the full. So a boundary throw and will take place on the wing position out of side. The scoreboard showing there have been six goals kicked here at Cadenia Park. Four by St Kilda and two by Geelong. Tapped down to Bruns in the front of the pack. A little kick comes out of the pack and hurried up there was Whitcomb again. Got the kick into the half forward zone. Good defence here by Elphinstone. Breaks away from any tackle and kicks high to Big Lowy at uh, half forward. He's up high, this big fella can't take the mark. Burns comes crashing through. His teammate Keel actually took the ball from him. Cunningham went in, got tackled a bit high, but the umpire officiating there is umpire Ross Castle, who did so well in the state game on Tuesday. Now at Cardinia Park this afternoon, we'll put the ball down. Well, at lunch we saw a number of those uh, very good Geelong forwards at the luncheon, and you can see that's uh, going to be their problem today as we see John Collins bring it towards half forward. Yeah. Nearly oh, a mark. Oh, Gotch it. took it away. Over to Narkel, Narkel to lock it, and Malaki, Malaki takes the mark. Plays on, he kicks it wide. Oh, Daryl Cunningham sets himself. No mark. Grabbed by Bruns, a hand pass. Caught with the ball. Back towards centre wing it goes. Little Andrew Buse picks it up. And the little state rover, off he goes with the football. He kicks it wide. He's looking down there for Turner. He's out. Good mark, mark, though. Too big, Alphonson. This will be 15 metres. Has to be. Umpire Brian Sheehan, a young umpire, deliberating on that. Now he calls play on as Alphonson kicks to Peter oh, Keel. Keel to Alistair Ford. Alistair Ford, the ex Footscray oh, boy, yeah. beautiful smother down there for the Cats by Peter White. Back to centre wing and McConville. McConville caught with the football. And in comes umpire Brian Sheehan once again, and he says he'll bounce it on centre wing. Scoreboard, four goals straight, St Kilda, leading Geelong, two goals. And Ford took a fortnight to kick that ball there. Peter then ran into his own teammate and made a couple of mistakes in one very quick moment there. The ball with Keel, the umpire said... Uh, St Kilda's free kick. The kick will be taken down there in the centre wing position by Ricky Nixon. Well, he's the ex-Carlton uh, player. He was a terrific player for Carlton Reserves, but uh, good to see him getting a regular game in the seniors. Nice hand pass. He got that moving up there. And St Kilda going into attack now. It's on their half-forward flank position. A chance for Gotch. Only 25 metres out from goal. A funny-looking kick, but it got there, I think. Yes, another goal kicked by St Kilda. The ball was forced up there by Collins. He got the ball moving forward, and Bradley got just kicked his second goal. So St Kilda looking good, Pete. They've kicked five straight goals to Geelong's two straight goals. And not forgetting, on Seven's Big League, we're playing at Cardinia Park 
and Ford in the hands of the trainer. Yes, there's uh, big Alistair Ford as you saw then on screen. But, uh, well, Gotts is dangerous because his skills are very, very good. Good play by John Collins on that occasion. There's Mossop getting it down to the ground. Kicked away by Barker, grabbed by Murray Whitcomb. Back to half forward. Burke couldn't get there. Michael Turner took his eye off the ball, but Lux of Fortune. He didn't take he possession. He was grabbed. He didn't take possession. He was grabbed, and it'll be a free kick to Michael Turner almost in the centre of the ground. Now, even he wants to hand pass because he, he kicks it wide now. Terry Bright, half forward flank is marked, and their forward line very crowded. Burke is in the goal square. The lead has been made by Burke. The ball is punched away. Joffa Cunningham overran it. Then it's Marty Christensen kicked away from him. Daryl Cunningham. No, it's not. Yes, it is Daryl Cunningham, in fact. Now where picks it go. up on the left foot. He kicks a high one towards centre wing. Young low, caught underneath the ball. Couch to Marty Christensen. He'll hand pass to Terry Bright. Bright from the true centre position. Runs straight down the ground. That's the way to play it. Kicks long. Who's there? The only one there is, is it Frawley or McConville? Frawley. Let's have a look as he gets up. It's Danny Frawley taking a good, strong mark. That was a hand pass to McConville who gave it to Darrell Cunningham. He'll be looking up toward the wing position. Had to go short because there's no one further afield. This is Collins going short to Jeff Cunningham. There's no one going past yet. He was waiting for a hand pass, but no one to kick to. Byrne sets himself. Can't take the mark because if chipping in well was box of Geelong. Boss looking for a hand pass. It must be compulsory these days to hand pass. He finds Bruns, who kicks down toward the half-forward flank position, and a good mark taken down there by Damien Drum. He's on the half-forward flank, 60 metres out from goal. A few players going past, but Drum is going to go back and take the kick, not the shot at goal. I wouldn't think he'd make the distance. The kick will be high toward the full-forward position where players set themselves over the heads of all. It's come. No one actually got near it. And the ball's taken away by Nixon, who got a hand pass moving to Mace. Yes, they've got no... Uh, well, that's kicked out in the full by Robert Mace, but they've got no system down here at all down the forward line. They're just kicking it up, hoping someone will take a mark. And Mossop and Burke, well, that's what at this then. stage, aren't good enough to get there and uh, take it. There's Schultz underneath the ball. Good and mark. Alistair Ford, once again, they're too good in defence at the moment. St Kilda, Alistair Ford takes the mark, gets it across to McConville. McConville backing up beautifully onto the left foot, hooks it wide. Cunningham well grabs marked. it on the second bite. Off he goes, Joppa Cunningham. He kicks it long and low and a beautiful pass. Is that David Grant? It is. He wants to hand pass. It was a good mark. Back to Cunningham. Cunningham back to Grant. Grant running around on the right foot. They didn't gain much there. That's Bradley Gotts. Oh, gee, ran into his uh, teammate <laughs> and it's a free kick. Going down there to Hoyles. Hoyles, a short pass. Looking there for Murray Whitcomb and he finds him at centre-half back. Whitcomb looking to play on too. It's 15 metres his way but he gets a hand pass into Bruns. Bruns going into the half-forward zone. Hard mark to take this one. Gamble tried to hook it out. Picked up by McConville who's doing very well. He got a hand pass out and it goes and has been rushed up there by number 42 is Nixon to whom I spoke before. And what's McConville done? Seven touches so well, the far. The funny thing, Jack, I think you'd agree that Geelong have had most of the play on their forward line, but they cannot get it past that half-forward line because, well, without Ablett, Brownless and Lindner and all those good forwards, they're finding it very difficult. Yes, and not much down there as far as kicking goals is concerned. Neil's hand pass to Couch wasn't good. He got caught by Burns. Burns, too. A lot of heavy work in there. He can't quite get the ball, though, and the umpire will bounce. The scoreboard showing some kill to five straight goals. Geelong two straight, so it's been seven goals kicked, 30 playing 12 with St Kilda leading. We've been playing nearly 18 minutes of the first term. St Kilda looking the better side at the moment. There's uh, Scratch and Neil on the left foot, taken by McConville, having a very good day again. Out wide to Ricky Nixon, the two ex uh, Carlton players combining. He hurries the ball down towards half forward. Mark Boss doing well across that half back line, takes a safe mark on his chest. He gives it across further afield. Scratch and Neil. Onto the left foot goes, oh, he nearly lost it, Robert Neal. He's got it now, though, onto the right foot. Brings it back towards half forward. McConville flies, but he's outmarked on this occasion as uh, Schultz took the mark. Gets it across to Bruns. Bruns, a beautiful pass to Marty Christensen. Off he goes. He's got the open goal. 25 metres out, stabs at the ball. And he's put it through for a lovely goal to Marty Christensen. That was a good goal picked by Christensen. The play came down from the half forward zone. He took the mark, had no opposition, really and then had to balk one of his opponents before he got a shot at goal. There's interchange being made here for Geelong. Scoreboard showing Geelong three goals. 
and St Kilda 5 coming on the ground for Geelong is Shane Williams and the ball back in the centre There's and Williams. young uh, Peter White went off Jack Peter White was the man that Williams has replaced centre bounce again 30 playing 18 no points as yet no behind scored all goals free kick no, it was rather ticky touch with free kick umpire didn't see much in that but the umpire has played the free kick in the centre of Cadenia Park Oval going Geelong's way so they will go into attack from this kick and the kick will be taken by Andrew Buse but he'll be looking for someone to take a mark he's gone with a funny looking supposed to be a torpedo oh that's a lot of blood, on, blood all over his face yeah, blood on Ford's face I thought on the uh, left cheek I did see him getting some attention and Elphinstone gets it out to Nark I had a little peek but not the best got a hand pass back in now it's Collins going into full forward up to low Lowe got bumped Ooh. in the back by Malarkey. He was a push in the back for sure. I think it was the right decision for sure. That ball was not within five metres when Malarkey hipped out young Stuart Lowe, who's already kicked the goal, and he is only 30 metres out on a 45-degree angle, and the young fella on screen, well, and he's holding it right down near those knees and right over this ball, a chance to kick his second goal as he stabs at this Shocking one. Oh, Shocking-looking kick, but did it float through? No, it's only one foot, and I think it would have been a fluke if that one had have floated through, Jack. Well, a dreadful style, that. I hope first, he improves on that. Well, it's the first point of the game. 5-1 St Kilda, lead Geelong, three straight goals. So that's 13 points to difference as Hoyles brings it out. That's a beautifully directed kick, and he finds Murray Whitcomb on half-back flank. He's on the members' side of the ground, looking down toward the members' wing. It's a high kick. Ford sport his own teammate, I thought, on that occasion. Picked up, oh... Nixon's kick, not a good one, over the boundary line, giving Geelong the opportunity to come forward from the half-forward zone. Well, still nearly the uh, wing position. So Cunningham will be on the mark, and Whitcomb has the kick for Geelong. Right down below our camera position here, actually told by the shot. There's the kick by Whitcomb, it's high. Uh, well judged Mark, I thought, by Mace, with nowhere to kick. Barker's leading now, but he's ignoring Barker. He's kicked straight to oh. two Geelong players. Damien Burke. A very, very easy mark, and so it should have been since it was kicked straight to him. There's Couch. Thank Hasn't God. gained anything to go wide, but they've got the loose man in, Michael Lenahan on the left foot. That's better. He kicks to the centre of the ground to scratch a kneel. Further ahead it goes to Malarkey, who's a long way down the ground. Malarkey to half forward. It's tapped over the back, but there was no little man there well, except Greg up. Burns. A beautiful pickup. Off he goes with his great pace, Burnsy. He'd love me saying that. <laughs> or it could have been a mark or a free kick there to Joffa Cunningham over to Barker. Barker goes for Lockett. No, he doesn't. He kicks it over his head. Chance for the high flyers. Grant shoved out of the way, grabbed by Malarkey. A beautiful hand pass to Robert Neal. He gives it further afield to Paul Couch. Couch, no one in particular to give it to, so he looked for the hand pass instead. Now he's forced into the kick as he brings it to half forward and Shane Williams over the back. Oh, St Kilda players everywhere. Alistair Ford, a hand pass. Back it comes. Off the ground by Ford. Oh, gee, they're playing well in defence as we see Daryl Cunningham over to Phil Narkel. Narkel, a long, low driving kick. It's a ripper. And Lockett, mar Lockett marks at the 50 metre mark. He's got a loose man in Keel. He gives it to him and good play by Lockett. She finds Keel this time 40 metres out from goal. St Kilda using a two-pronged attack with David Grant down there and Lockett leading out. And when Lockett's out of position, the players are going toward Grant. Is it working yet? This kicks by Keel up toward the forward zone. It's gone through for one behind. Never ever threatened to be a goal. Was lucky to get through for one behind, really. So St Kilda 5-2, 32. Geelong three goals, 18 points. You're on Sevens Big League with the time clock approaching the 23-minute mark of the first term. Gary Malarkey should go straight down the ground with a big kick. He comes out toward the member side slightly, towards Christensen and Boss. They fight each other for possession, so they lose it. The ball's on the turf, 55 metres out from the St Kilda goal, and Boss got the little kick. Hello, Nixon looks like he's bleeding too from the face. His hand pass goes to Mace, he taps it out toward Gamble. Gamble looking into the half-forward zone, and no opposition here. Here's a chance for Lockett to kick a goal. Lockett straightens up, lines them up, and missed it badly off target. Only one behind. Well, not very often that <laughs> Tony Lockett, he's not happy with himself. Not very often he'd be left on his own for 30 metres, and then, and then has a running shot at goal. Most of his shots for goal are from a standing start, as we well know. 5-3. Uh, St Kilda, Geelong still three goals, but Malarkey was a long way away then from Tony Lockett. Not good defensive play. There's Bright, a hand pass, or intercepted by Cunningham, who's playing well. 
gets it to Keel. Keel on the left foot, a high one. A chance here for Lowe from behind and Lockett. It comes wide. A chance for Young Lowe again as he knocks it on. Now it's uh, Boss on the left foot. A high ball towards the centre of the ground. Alistair Ford underneath it. Might be tackled. He is. Now a chance for Geelong as we see Whitcomb getting it out there to Michael Turner. Turner wide to Mossop. Mossop has it thumped away. But good play by the big fellow as he went in well after done. it again and he got it. A good effort too as we see Drum. Gets it, getting it across there to Michael Turner. Turner into the open goal. Stabs at that one. And Michael Turner's put it through for his second of the game. Wilson killed a 5-3, 33, leading Geelong. Four straight goals, 24 points on seven's big lead. Good play by John Mossop. There I he is on screen. I thought it was good screen. play by Mace, too. He put his shoulder into Mossop and knocked yeah. him down, but uh, Mossop had too much strength and well, his recovery was good. Well, he got Mossop, the hand pass well, Mossop's come back from that knee injury and he came out after that mark, has it thumped away, had it thumped away by Crawley, but he kept going after it and that paved the way for the little, little blokes and eventually a goal came uh, through the hands of the captain, Turner. And they need him firing, Michael Turner, because they haven't got a lot of class up on that forward line, Jack. No, they have not. Nine points separate the teams, and Geelong come forward now through Brunt. It should bounce a bit. Yes, it does. It goes high. It'll be a hard one to go to gain. Mossop tried to get it out. Elphinstone taps it out to Gamble. Gamble rode the opposition well and got it out toward the next Carlton player. We got it up the Conville, up toward the wing position where it's going to be taken by Narkin, who plays on quickly. The lead's good, taken by Gotts. Gotts gets it back to Keel. Keel gives it to Burns. He's in trouble. Burns tries to ride the tackle. He's caught in possession. A good tackle by Terry Brock. Perfect example, Jack. I think you'd agree. One handball too many. Gotts should have had the kick. Right. Words of wisdom from Peter McKenna. And it, now to take the kick is Terry Bright. Well, Burns, he was covered. He was gone. He couldn't <laughs> get a hand pass away. Bright goes in short. Well, fairly short. Sure. Wasn't a bad kick. Goes out to the other side. Well, a very, very even contest we're seeing here. Geelong have had most of the play. but uh, Schultz kicking. Yeah, Schultz it was towards half forward. That's... Uh, a hand pass coming out wide a chance for Michael Lenahan on the left foot he hooks it back but he can't get it back far enough and nowhere near far enough and he puts it out of bounds on the full with the time clock 26 minutes into the first term scoreboard showing 33 playing 24 nine points between the teams St Kilda leading Geelong at Cardinia Park and this kick by Nixon up toward the half back zone thumped away toward the wing of the half back zone again and now the kick coming off the boot of Buse in toward the half-forward zone. Once again, it gets kicked high. Yes, that's Whitcomb getting it to full forward. Gee, they're crowding Mossop down there. He's getting smothered. Grabbed by Frawley. Frawley hooks it back towards the half-back line. Nearly a mark to Gamble. Buse gets it to Bruns. Bruns with a hand pass to Whitcomb. Doing all right. And there's little uh, Bruns getting it back. Marty Christensen couldn't take the mark. Now it's a chance for Couch. Oh, strong play by Mace. In they go after it. Good umpiring by umpire Ross Castle to come in and bounce it about 25 metres out from the Geelong goal. Every chance of a score by Geelong here because it's only 25 to, or 20 to 25 metres out, very close to goal. And it to be picked up by Rover in a snapshot. No, Brunch couldn't get it. Keel gets it out. He shoots it out towards Jeff Cunningham who takes the mark. And the ball is now 50 metres out from Geelong's goal. Jeff Cunningham's hand pass comes back oh. to Keel who shoots it in short to Burns. Burns strength nearly won him that ball but not quite and we'll see a boundary throw in that was shocking back. play by Peter Keel he's kicked the ball 20 metres across to a bloke who was covered he could have kicked it 60 his way so if I was uh, Graham Shelley I would be very disappointed with that bit of play beautiful play by Burke to get it to Bruns Bruns down to the ground the mark was dropped there by Frawley it's grabbed by Mossop he's trying hard down there Mossop oh gee Turner was away with the ball and the umpire said it was holding the man and it will go back there to Daryl Cunningham. Yes, he was being held, wasn't in possession, so the umpire paying the free kick to Cunningham. Cunningham has this kick for St Kilda. He's on the half-back line. The lead is by Ford. Uh, Baker, Barker, I'm sorry. Yes, and a mark taken by Barker. He didn't, kick didn't travel very far. Once again, the hand pass goes back to Cunningham. Left foot kick up toward Lowe. He's at the back of the opposition there. Malaki's hand pass finds Bruns. Bruns gathering pace and getting momentum up the, to get the ball to the half-forward zone. A charge for Elkenstone or Turner. Elkenstone tapped it out toward Gamble. That was good thinking. Gamble can get the ball short into Nixon. That he does. Nixon can't take the mark. Mace gives it back to Nixon, but he, Nixon can't accept it clearly. He eventually ducked the head. Got caught in possession for mine. Yeah, play on the call. Should have been. 
We see Oh Drum grabbed by the leg. <laughs> yes, he was grabbed by the leg, Damien Drum. He got the loose man, Michael Cole, and he kicks there. Oh, he's off. He's off, he's off Michael Cole. Hooks it back at the goals. And has it gone through? Yes, a lovely goal. To Michael Cole, who played on, was under pressure and hooked it back for a beautiful goal. You know, I was just looking uh, to my right in the box a lot, not long, far from there, not far away from here, is Johnny Devine, and I don't think he was too impressed with the actions of Cole there, who had uh, taken the mark, could have had the standing shot at goal, then played on, but he was quite relieved when the ball went through. So it's only three points between the teams now. Five straight goals to five goals three. Geelong trailing St Kilda by three points. The time clock approaching the 30-minute mark. We'll just go on 29 oh. and a half. Suck it off the ground by Neil to the half-forward oh. zone. Daryl Cunningham again. In the thick of things, threw that ball out to Gamble. He got a hand pass to McConville. McConville was in two minds. He kicks it straight to Terry Bright. Very poor disposal on that occasion by McConville. Not good at all. Bright going straight across the ground. Geelong do this quite a bit. That's all the days of the man curvises, I think. Peter hasn't been left yet. <laughs> He's uh, big Damien Burke, who's a very, very good knock ruckman, but that's a shocking kick because it's gone straight to Robert Mace. He hooks it back towards half forward, a chance for Geelong. This is uh, Michael Lenahan over to Murray Whitcomb. Whitcomb a high ball, looking for Mossop. Mossop in front, up he goes. Comes to the deck, a chance for Shane Williams. Shane Williams a hand pass to Couch. Couch has got it on the right foot, has a pot shot at the goals, and he's kicked it. He's kicked it all right, he's put it through to the sixth goal of Geelong, and they've hit the front by three points. Yes, what great kicking for goals. Six straight goals by Geelong, five goals, three to St Kilda. So it's 11 goals scored for the quarter, 36 playing 33. You're on Sevens Big League from Cardinia Park, and we are now approaching the 31-minute mark of the first term, so those 11 goals have certainly extended the quarter. Back in the centre with Geelong leading for the first time, I thought, Pete. Well, I'd say it's the first time. And the other thing is, Jack, I think Geelong badly need a little rover to get down there around uh, Mossop and Burke when they're resting at full forward because they're contesting beautifully, but the ball's hitting the deck a lot as we hear the siren just end the first quarter here, a very even quarter. Scoreboard showing Geelong six goals straight, a total of 36, leading the Saints 5-3, 33. <laughs> Sevens big league from Cardinia Park, Geelong. Geelong, the home side, six straight goals for 36 points and killed a five goals, three, 33 points. You're on Sevens big league, of course, and Burke got a big thub from that rock. Gave it out to Neil there from Christensen. Neil goes forward. Mossop's a chance, can't take the mark. Going into lend assistance is Williams. He gets the ball out back toward the half-back or half-forward Frank for Geelong. Can't be picked up clearly. Mossop tried to get a hand pass away. But we'll see a boundary throw in taking place in the half-forward position for Geelong. Well, you can imagine uh, John Devine's frustration. When you see that ball being belted down there and no ablet there, and uh, Mossop's not really a full forward. He's uh, not even 100% fit in my book, as we see Andrew Buse trying to get it out. Burns, a hand pass to Keel. Keel cop one in the back, and the umpire will probably pay that. Yes, umpire Ross Castle right on the scene, and uh, Ross was umpire in the interstate state of origin match on Tuesday night and did a pretty good job, I think, Jack. Between yes, I thought West Australia quite... and Victoria. Yes, we can't blame him for Victoria losing the game, can we? So the ball on the half-back no, we'll flank... we'll blame the other bloke. Yeah, we'll blame the other bloke. It must be blamed somewhere. So on the half-back flank, on the outer side, as Peter McKenna told you, the calling for the ball at half-forward is low. He has a chance to get there, but no, he's beaten to boot the flight of the ball on that occasion, and the mark's taken by Boss. Yes, yeah, umpire Brian Sheehan playing that mark. It was a good, strong mark, too. He was a good player in the first quarter. He gets across to Whitcomb. He was a good player, too. So he kicks it wide. Could good have been mark. a free kick. Oh taken by Couch, Couch with a long kick up to Mossop, now are they backing him up? No, because Crawley has taken the mark and a good strong mark, he's got a loose man out wide in Ricky Nixon, this is nearly out in the full oh. the fire gives him the benefit of the doubt, Nixon, a short one further field, now he played on said the boundary umpire and therefore it Nixon's is a throw in decision well, we saw this with Dippier Domenico a few weeks ago yeah. The umpire deliberating that he played on, so it's out of bounds on half-forward flank. Yeah, Nixon asked the question, the umpire explained it to him. That time he didn't get the chance to play on because the ball's run past him and gone out of bounds. So we'll see a boundary throw in taking place on the half-forward flank for Very Geelong. technical decision, because whether he actually played on or not, isn't it? Well, 
The umpire has to make that decision. Yeah. Mace's kick, not a good one. Goes nearly backwards towards Geelong's half forwards. Oh, Williams a chance to score. He rode the bunk well. The left foot shot will be on target. Or is it? No, it swung away at the last moment. The first minor score for Geelong. Bad mistake by Mace. Geelong, six goals, one, 37. St Kilda, five goals, three, 33 on sevens, big league. A very, very even contest uh, so far as we see Ricky Nixon bringing in towards half-back. McConville was there. A hand pass comes away as we see a flying pot shot at the goals. And this could bounce through. No, the wrong side. And that was by Andrew Buse, that kick. And just missed and threw for a behind. So the scores are... Geelong 6-2, St Kilda 5-3, so five points the difference. Only five points between the teams. In toward the centre of the ground, the kick is delivered. Hand pass comes out to Mace, looked like Peel gave it to him. Mace's hand pass in towards Cunningham, back to Mace. A hand pass a lot these days for no real gain. The kick down toward the forward pocket area, no mark taken. Defence side Geelong under pressure. Here's a chance for Lockett to shoot toward goal, just off target and only one behind, but the Geelong defence made a mistake there, Well, Pete. two Geelong players fought each other for the ball, and uh, the ball came loose. In fact, that's happened a couple of times today. Turner and his teammate earlier in the first quarter, and a teammate fought for a ball too down there, and nearly cost them a goal as we see the ball marked by Gary Malarkey leading out from half-back flank. He's uh, playing a long way away from Lockett, so interesting to see if he is still playing at full-back. Over the back is Marty Christensen. Hand passes it wide. This is Murray Whitcomb having a very good day. Hooks it back towards Shane Williams who flies from behind. He's got it. He gets it across. No, he doesn't. It was smothered beautifully. John Collins is it. They've been tackled. And the umpire oh, said gee. it was held to him. Let's see who it is. You're lucky to get it away is John with that. Collins. He was very, very lucky. He had time to get rid of that, Jack. Well, he, he ran into his own teammate. That was his biggest mistake or his teammate's mistake. And he was collared, but the umpire didn't pay the penalty. Ford got the tap down, has been picked up and kicked by Keel. It's a lot of kicks that don't go very uh, oh. much direction with them. Boss dropped an easy mark, tried to get a hand pass back to Neil, gave it to Burke eventually, who kicks very high toward the forward pocket position. And no mark to McConville. The ball on the turf. McConville dived in once again to try and gain possession. It comes back out to Keel. He squanders the ball a bit though. He doesn't use it very well. He gets it out to Mace. Mace gets a hand pass in. Gamble's hand pass comes into the centre of the ground, taken by Cunningham. Cunningham looking for a lead, which isn't there. He gets a little kick in toward Narkel, who waited for the ball to come. He shoots it back around the corner. Gotch is there, can't take it. Darrell Cunningham can't get there either. Boss there again for Geelong. Another chance for Neil. Neil was grabbed, didn't have it. The umpire gives him the free kick. Yes, umpire Brian Sheehan, young umpire, right on the scene there and a correct decision gives it to Scratch and Elliot who was retarded going for the ball across it to he went sideways to give it to Michael Cole he has got the loose man but he didn't gain all that much distance off he goes another hand pass over the top to Terry Bright Malarkey is waiting for this one he elects instead to give it to Murray Whitcomb I think it does he cover some territory a long hand pass back to Malarkey who gets a shocking bounce a good tackle by Malarkey allows uh, Michael Cole to pick it up and a driving kick up the Mossop can't take the mark where are the Rovers they should hang around him all the time oh gee could have been a free kick to Geelong grabbed there by Alistair Ford over to Ricky Nixon with a hand pass and Ricky Nixon the ex-Carlton player looks for David Grant Grant up in front of Malarkey who is caught behind and David Grant takes the mark 15 metres against Cole Grant will be the recipient of that he kicks now toward the half forward zone where they're up high and the mark has been taken by Big Lockett He's a long way out from goal. He's 70 metres out. The kick is supposed to be a short pass. Picked up by Keel. He got rid into the turf. Taken by Bright. The Geelong defence looking a bit better now. The ball goes toward Malarkey. He can hand pass if he wishes. He's going to back himself. The bounce didn't really come back to him clearly. He gets a kick up toward the half forward zone. The ball thumped away toward Mace. Mace got tackled too high. Got a hand pass away. Should have been his free kick for all his hand pass. Not good. Mace goes oh. in once again. Taken by Williams. He's grabbed by Ford. And the umpire said there's yes. going to be a, a bounce taking place 50 metres out from the Geelong goal. Good umpiring by umpire Ross Castle. Had no chance of getting rid of that. Malarkey looks a better player away from full back, actually, Jack. Yes, he's got the job of looking after David Grant by the look of things. So it's Whitcomb with the chance now. He gets a hand pass to Neil. Neil's left foot kick goes high towards the square. Up there they are. Frawley got the hand to it and should be paid the mark. Good mark. Scoreboard showing Geelong 38 points and Kilda 34 points. They're on Seven's Big League in the second term. 
and we're approaching the seven and a half minute mark of the quarter. Oh, they're falling down badly as we see at full forward uh, Geelong. Ricky Nixon, left foot, cupped over the line, but the ball has been belted up there time and time again. And they're, they're missing uh, Brownless and Ablett, Lindner and the big high marks up there because Mossop is not taking his marks and neither is Schultz at centre forward. 6-2, playing 5-4 with Geelong leading, four points the difference. Neil trying to get the ball forward, he's on the half forward flank, 55 metres out from goal, he lets fly. Frawley tried to get in the front position, can't get there yet, on the turf, Mossop's in there fighting, in comes Schultz, and the umpires said another bounce takes place, only 25 metres out from the Geelong goal. St Kilda about to make an interchange, I think, uh, Rod Owen is uh, warming up, and we'll find out in a moment who is coming off the ground. Greg Burns hasn't done a lot so far in this match. He started off all right, I thought, Peter, but then he's fallen away a bit. Hand pass from Gamble came away to Ward McConville. There's a chance now. It was still a throw to Neil from Williams. The kick toward goal. It floats towards Turner and Elphinstone and comes through 4-1 behind. The umpire indicating that minor score now on the scoreboard for Geelong. Well, Greg Burns, I think, in fact, is the player being taken off and not Owen on. I thought he was... He hasn't done a lot at all. The couch is doing well on him, I reckon, as the ball comes down towards half-back. Up they go. It could have been a free kick to St Kilda. There's Buse. A beautiful hand pass to Turner. Turner straightens up, fires. I think he's missed. He has, and one point. Well, for a side that was six goals straight at quarter time, Geelong now have 6-4 to their credit, so only four behinds in this turn. Yes, Burns is the player coming off the ground, and Owen is the player to replace him. So, Owen coming on. Burns going off to scoreboard 40, playing 34. Geelong leads and killed it by one goal. Up goes Schultz, can't take the mark. Whitcomb's hand pass, got stuck in the mud. Take, taken in now by Marty Christensen. And a, <laughs> you wouldn't call it a pass, but he Great found pass. Robert Neal. He was in the showers after the game. He'll remind Scratcher Neal about that great left foot pass he gave <laughs> it was an absolute fluke yes. as we see he's got a kick from about the 50 metre line a slight breeze up that end so we'll just about make the distance there's a high one Mossop middle of the pack nearly took the mark in they go after and this will be a bounce umpire's doing an excellent job I reckon today and that's uh, Brian Sheehan and Ross Castle and if that doesn't get me an invitation to the umpire's ball I don't know what will he might be the only one there. There's the ball put down in the goal square. It should be tapped through by the St Kilda players. No, it hasn't been as yet. And McConville will bring the ball away from the goal square down to Wardour. Cunningham staged that a bit. The umpire said he agreed with what I said too. Bright's hand pass, not a good one. Mark gets away out of trouble to uh, Darrell Cunningham to Mace. <laughs> it's a funny little pass. Mace comes in toward Keel on the half forward zone. He can't take the mark. Tap thumped away on this occasion by Lenahan. Lenahan's hand pass not good. Lowe's there for St Kilda. Tried to keep the ball, get the ball out to Keel. Keel was pushed in. No, it was St Kilda. The long player pushed in the back, and Brian Sheehan said it's a free kick going the way of Drum. I saw this uh, young umpire in the Army Reserves Cup a couple of weeks ago. He did an outstanding job, so good to see him in the seniors. There's Bright getting it back there to Michael Cole. Cole with a high ball. Up towards half foot. Alistair Ford took his eye off the ball. Here's a chance as we see Damien Drum. Oh, why did he pass? Oh, it's come up. Oh, gee, it was dangerous play to Turner because he had an open goal from 35 metres out and he went for the pass, Jack. Yes, he did. He could have had a shot at goal, but they are is unselfish. Pete would have to put it down to that. Turner to take the shot at goal. Oh, he's just got it, I think. Yes, only Ooh. just got in. I didn't have much to spare that one. Geelong 7-4 after Michael Turner kicks his third goal. 7-4-46, St Kilda 5-4-34. You're on Sevens Big League and a very entertaining game of football to cut in your park. Well, it's amazing, uh, Jack, in that first quarter, in the first half of the first quarter, St Kilda looked absolutely terrific and uh, they looked a better side by a mile. Geelong was struggling up forward and yet you look at the scoreboard now and it's 34 to 46 so uh, in favour of Geelong Burke is a terrific tap ruckman on this occasion it goes to Grant who's obviously been shifted and the mark has been taken by Hoyles Hoyles to Lenahan is a much better player in defence than on the forward line he kicks it to Shane Williams who's battled really hard since coming onto the ground there it is half forward back to Shane Williams he gives it to Scratcher Neal Neal on the right foot hooks it back to Turner out he comes trapped that magnificently still got it Hooks it back, it won't be 15 metres, I wouldn't imagine. No, it's not, said the umpires. Rod Owen goes in after it. 
He's got it in the back pocket, hooks it back, but the mark has been taken there by Williams. Williams towards a full forward. Oh, gee, it's knocked back. This is dangerous. Oh, the St Kilda players fumbling. Now it's grabbed by Darrell Cunningham. He gets it wide to John Collins. Collins out of defence. The ex-North Melbourne player brings it towards the centre of the ground. Who's there? Oh, Bradley Gotts gets flattened. That was silly play by Burt because Gotts had got the mark. I don't think Burke could do much about it. Peter was wound up and couldn't really stop. I don't think he could stop. He went straight in the back of little Bradley Gotch who made sure the umpire saw it. And Gotch gets the ball moving into the half four zone. Nearly a mark to low, not paid. It's near the boundary line. Keel has run out with the ball, so we'll see a boundary throw and take him. Say that again. He was that close to taking a real good mark there, the young kid. He just lost the grip on it the split second because he played in front. That kid, he's only 17. He'll be a good player. Burke, as I said, he's a terrific ruckman. Burke. Uh, down the Bruns, Bruns towards Schultz and that's a terrific mark by Michael Schultz at half forward flank, they've got to kick it long, now he's just going to do that as he brings it to the pocket, out comes Shane Williams but it's beaten for it by Ricky Nixon. Nixon going wide, there's no one to give it to out there, he's got to change his tack now, come into Owen, Owen looking downfield, the lead is made by Barker no it's not Barker, it's gone over the head of the, yes it was Barker, his hair's getting fairer, or maybe it's going grey at, uh, at the half forward zone for St Kilda uh, it's uh, the long defence standing up now. What's Boss going to do with this? He's going a bit Beautiful. long too. He's kicked it long. Up to the half forward zone. Oh. No one came in to meet the ball at all. A hand, card, a hand pass came back out to Mace. Mace having trouble picking up. Going for a short pass. Daryl Cunningham. He breaks away into his left foot and hand passes back to Grant. Grant's being called by Lowe's. He's ignored that. He's gone into little Bradley Gotch. Now you've got to be pretty good to find Gotch under there. He goes to Ward Lockenbeet. No, he's got the goal. And I said he went to Ward Lockett, it wasn't until he was going for a pass to Lockett or the shot at goal and he's popped it through for his third goal. So St Kilda coming back a little bit there, they're only six points now, down from Geelong score. 7-4, playing 6-4 on Sevens Big League. Five possessions to Bradley Gotts, but boy, what's he done with them? Three goals out of those five possessions, good play that was by Daryl Cunningham over to Grant. A beautifully directed kick by David Grant. And the advantage there is shown of going straight towards uh, the centre of the ground as he put it to centre forward to Gotch and Gotch a long kick put it through. There's Burke. Oh, he's dominating the hit outs over to Scratcher Neal. Up towards Schultz. Oh, gee, nearly a mark. Punched away by Gamble to McConville. Back to Gamble. This young kid has been a good player at St Kilda since oh, coming across. Oh, down that 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 a shocking hand pass. It comes straight to Schultz. Schultz to... Um, Scratch and Neil, he wasn't sure what to do with that one. Couch, oh, what a good mark by Paul Couch at centre-half forward. Some more close attention. Turner getting some really close attention down there at full forward. Mossop goes back. If I was a little fella, I'd hang around Mossop all day and I reckon you'd get a million kicks. There's Turner and Elphinstone on screen at the tension Peter was talking about. The kick's dropping short. Who's in front to take the mark? No one can actually take the mark. And the kick comes away down to the half-back zone. Came off the boot of Elphinstone, but taken by Burke. Hand passes out. Marty Christensen's there waiting for it. He gets a kick in toward the half-forward zone. The ball put the turf. Comes there to the half-forward zone. Andrew Buse is there. So was Terry Bright. He ducked the head, expecting a tackle, which didn't actually come. And 50 metres out from Geelong's goal, we'll see the ball bounced by the umpire. So the umpire in this position is Ross Castle. Scoreboard showing one goal between the teams here at Gatineau Park. The home side leading, Geelong leading St Kilda by only six points with the time crop 16 minutes into the second turn. Half forward, centre half forward in fact for Geelong. And both forward lines, uh, even though they've won the team's kick six at St Kilda and Geelong seven, I'd say both forward lines are battling as we see Schultz doing the ruck work down to the ground it goes and that's again umpire Castle said it was held to him umpires have hardly made a mistake right from the start of the game umpire Sheen and Castle they're playing the obvious free kicks and uh, really letting it flow and a very even contest we're seeing grabbed by Ricky Nixon on the left foot no out wide home. Paul Couch is the only one there he's got it he'll swing onto the left foot should go for home it's a long low kick Turner out in front, but they haven't got enough uh, marking power up there at the moment as the ball is uh, forced out to the half-back line by the Saints defenders, and it goes over the line. It was good play by Nixon. He got that hand pass. He had no one to give it to, so he went for the boundary line, and the umpire couldn't really penalise that, even though it was intentional. Boundary throw in. Mossop's big fist brings the ball back toward McConville. He's getting a bit of pressure applied by Brunt, but his hand pass comes away. 
and uh, St Kilda getting out of trouble from that back pocket position through Grant who's covering a fair bit of territory one minute uh, he's on the half forward flank and you, he bobs up and in the back pocket I think he's playing on the ball now uh, Jack he's probably changing with Trevor Barker in fact well, Barker's down at the at standing at centre half forward yeah, I, I think, think he's playing in the pocket though not yeah, too I think, sure. they, I think he and Grant are interchanging on the ball right Geelong coming into attack up toward Burke uh, now it comes out to McConville, taken by Daryl Cunningham, doing quite well, Pete. Yes, he, he's a good team player, Daryl, too, as he gets it across to Keel. Peter Keel looking for Barker. Barker, oh, he drops that one. He should have marked that, copped it in the back. Umpire Brian Sheehan right on the side of that incident, as an umpire should be, and gives that decision. Well, Lockett's kick. looking for the lead. Here it goes now. Lockett, uh, the kick not good enough. Narkle's in front. Lockett's there. He'll have trouble picking up because the ball's not easy to grab today. Here's another chance for Cunningham with the ball in front of him. He did that well. Got ta tackled too high for mine. And the umpire hasn't awarded any free kick. Now he's played a trip to Geelong. But Cole plays on and gets the ball moving toward the centre of the ground. Gamble can't take it. Schultz is there for Geelong. Good His play. hand pass comes out to Buse. Buse on the wing. Or comes back in toward the centre now. He's going to get a left foot kick working to half forward. Oh. The kick straight to Grant. Player of whom we spoke before. Grant moves it to half forward. Barker's going to fly high, but can't take the mark. Darrell Cunningham again in there. Can't get the ball out as yet. Has the ball out now to Barker, but the umpire just sounded the whistle. Barker was about to go goalward, but the umpire said, I'll take it back. So, ball being put down 50 metres out from St Kilda's goal. There's only one goal between the teams. Geelong leading St Kilda at this stage, and we're getting toward the 19-minute mark of the second turn. Hand pass from Neil finds Terry Bright, who goes into drum drum now from the centre, where's he going he's thinking of where he might go looking for a lead, he's in two miles, he might be in three miles away he's going at present he's going to kick to the half forward zone player set themselves and really it should have been a mark to Grant, Nixon's hand pass comes out and this is Collins moving the ball down to the half forward flank and Daryl Cunningham again but he tried to keep, oh that was well done, I thought he did keep the ball in play, Dumpire said he threw it hey? by Brian Sheehan said he threw that one Jack, he did knocked it back oh well I don't know about umpire Brian Sheen's decision there. We'll ask him about World of Sport tomorrow. Neil going in towards the half-forward oh. zone, and there's two oh. of them. Messed it up, runs, takes it, drives forward. Here's a chance for Geelong if they can take a mark. They mightn't have to. Frawl, he didn't have to knock it through. He didn't know that, though. We could see it from here. He had the paddy to himself, and he picked it up and brought the ball away from the goal square, and uh, he tapped it through for a point. Now we'll see Burns coming back on the ground and the young half Ford Lowe being taken off by St Kilda. <laughs> Alistair Ford, a short one, a oh, shocking kick by Ford, straight to Scratch O'Neill, who kicks wide and he kicks it straight to Alvinson. So no wonder these sides cop a couple of hidings, Jack. Their skill level is very, very ordinary as we see Peter Keel from behind flying. Can't take the mark. Centre wing. Hand pass to Alistair Ford. Let's see if we can do a better kick this time. He kicks it wide, looking for Rod Owen. Owen has got it, slips over. Now, was he in possession? The umpire said no, umpire Brian Sheehan, and it is holding the man. And uh, Rod Owen will take this on centre wing. Well, Burns has just come back on the ground. He just clashed with his skipper there in Barker. So they didn't actually gain possession of the ball, did they? Coils. Hand pass to Whitcomb. Oh, cleverly done, Andrew Buse. He was underneath that one, but tapped it on. And the hand pass from Michael Lenahan out to Michael Cole. Cole running up the ground. Oh, funny-looking kick. Turner over the back, though. Here comes the Geelong captain. Couldn't pick it up against Alphonson. Alphonson goes for the boundary line. They've been trying to take Michael Cole off for a while to let Hocking come on and have a run and every time they've gone to do it the ball's come down to that half forward flag and Cole's got to run back into the play maybe he wants to get a kick to stay on there's a ball hand passed away by Williams over the boundary line we'll see another boundary throw in taking place it's only about 35 metres out from Geelong's goal Geelong are leading present at present they're 7547 to 6440 so a 7 point lead held by Geelong a chance for Williams to change that couldn't gain possession Andrew Buse well tackled I thought the umpire calls play on. It's been picked up and kicked high by Hocking. In toward the full forward zone. It might be through. It's just oh. touched and hit the post. Only one behind. Well, Hocking did actually come on the ground, but not in place of Michael Cole, as you saw him have that shot. Scoreboard, 6-4 St Kilda. Geelong, 7-6. Geelong at the moment, certainly looking the better side, as we see John Collins for the Saints trying to pick it up. He's surrounded by three Geelong guys. And luck's a fortune, because it was tunnel-balled out. And there was Greg Burns, who's back on the ground. 
coming through the centre, he kicks it wide. A chance for Mike Lenahan. Oh, cleverly done as he knocked it away. There's a good hip and shoulder bump. It's kicked away, though, by Terry Bright towards Michael Lenahan, and he'll go for the boundary line, sure enough. And over the line it goes. Half-back blank for Geelong, and the umpire said it was umpire Brian Sheehan, right on the scene, said that it was over the shoulder as he knocked it across the line, and the free kick will go to Mike uh, Lenahan. 22 and a half minutes gone. The second term on Seven's Big League. Burke can't take the mark. Ford got the hand to it. Whitcomb gets a hand pass to Bruns, who goes short and finds a teammate. The teammate is Couch. Couch 50 metres out. Gets a hand pass back to Hocking. Hocking, who just missed a goal only moments ago, puts this one on its way, and it's touched on the line again. So that's the second one. He's popped at the goals and just had them touched right on the goal line and threw for only one behind. So Geelong, who were six goals straight at quarter time, now have kicked one goal seven for the term. They are 7-7, 49 to 6-4-40. Well, a good mark taken by David Grant. Off he goes. He's doing well when he's uh, playing on the ball. Towards half forward, over the back is uh, Marty Christensen. Off he goes from half back flank. That's a good long low kick to Mossop. And that's a good mark by the big fella. By the umpire, Ross Castle said he didn't mark that. I don't know, he must have missed that look like a mark maybe it hit the ground i don't know well it didn't appear to be uh, well, anything we, else but a mark but he had his back to us maybe it hit the ground Jack. right we'll take his word for it the ball put down now half forward about 60 meters out from geelong's goal ford's tap came down toward the front of the pack socket off the ground a charge for hockey again now he got a hand pass to turner this will be a goal michael turner now you're caught okay that's a goal i thought came off his knee that should be a goal I reckon that's a goal. I think it was off the knee. I think that's a goal, Michael Turner. Well, to my mind, you're dead right, but the umpire's only given you one little point. Fair effort. That's Sorry, a, pal. It's a knee down, isn't it? Yes, Jack? for sure. That was a goal in my book, so we'll have to look at that one tomorrow. 7 8 50 to 6 4 40. You're on Seven's Big League, and a very contentious uh, uh, decision, that one. Yes, and here we see Peter McConville towards Trevor Barker. He can't pick it up. Oh, good, strong work. Knocked it on by Barker. Rod Owen. Half forward flag, that Geelong defence playing well as we see Boss, who's been an excellent player, down towards our oh. Barker, cop one across the year. Play on, they're playing the advantage rule. They should have. Darryl Cunningham, but I know because maybe that could have gone, that kick could have gone straight to a Geelong player and it wouldn't have been the advantage as we see Cunningham, a wobbly kick towards Narkel, who's been very quiet after that great game in the interstate game. In they go after it. Narkel's there again, caught with the football, throws it away. Neville Bruns is in there. Now it's Barker. Good play by Trevor Barker as he kicks it wide. Right out there towards the half forward flank and the ball bounces over the line. We've been playing exactly 25 minutes into the second quarter with the scoreboard showing Geelong leading 7-8 to St Kilda 1-4. So that's 10 points the difference. 10 points between them. Burke taking the ball from the boundary throwing, getting it in toward the centre of the ground. Marty Christensen couldn't quite trap it cleanly. Eventually gains possession, doing well too. Got the ball into the half forward zone. He kicks toward his teammate in Mossop. Mossop trapped it nicely. His hand pass came back towards Schultz. Gamble can't do much about it for St Kilda. The hand pass from Couch goes to Hocking. Hocking doing well up here in the forward zone. Looking for another shot at goal. Can't find them on that occasion. Michael Turner going crook saying you could have given that to me. Well, to yeah. the blasting away and out of bounds. Well, Steve Hocking will end up back on the back line shortly if he doesn't improve his kicking. He's had three real good opportunities to kick a goal and he's missed a lot. As we see Mossop, but then again, Backman find it a lot harder going to the forward line yes, than what used... forward line players do to the back line. Yes, yes. Well, Backman are used to sharing the ball, Pete. They're not selfish <laughs> like forwards. <laughs> St Kilda 10 points down to Geelong 50 playing 40, Geelong a chance to score here the shot is a good shot off the left boot Elkenstone has taken them out I think it nearly went through for the mark. goal I think it's a mark was it by oh, gee that was close so Geelong having a few near misses here not really getting the, the benefit of their shots at goal are they oh they should be goals in front on the play they've had but I'll tell you what you put Ablett or someone up there they would be as we see Grant doing well on the ball coming down the ground. They'll probably race it down and get a goal now, St Kilda, as we see the mark it's a long taken way by out. Lockett along with they've got Owen at full forward now and Lockett out in the half forward line. Lockett kicks it wide. Owen Trip. tripped, he tripped himself I thought, Jack, oh, as we know. see Malarkey give it across there to Michael Cole. Cole running up the ground, they won't catch him, he's got enormous pace. Oh gee, Owen went down behind the play, Couch gave him one up towards Mossop, over the top of the pack. Play on, said the umpire, they're going in very hard after the football, 
and umpire Ross Castle will come in and bounce it about 30 metres out from the Geelong goal. Couch is reported. Couch has been reported. Well, why didn't he get the free well, kick if he reported well, he, he saw it. Well, he's umpire Sheehan's writing it down in his book now that Couch, I think, has been reported for striking Owen. Hang on, Jack, if he's well, reported that's him, that's a wrong decision. Well, he could have brought it back. Well, let's wait and see here because umpire Couch took the notebook out. You can see him now with a notebook in hand and I think you'll find he's going to talk to Couch. That he is. I think you'll find that Couch is reported for striking Owen. Well, that's a shocking umpire well, decision. All right, ask him tomorrow on World of Sport. Like I said before, he wasn't in control of the game when the ball went further afield. The, look, the incident happened on the umpire's side. He should have brought the ball back to where the incident was well, and said free kick. Well, there he is now telling Owen that Couch has been reported for striking him. So, rather sensational here at halftime at Cardinia Park. Geelong, 7-8-50. St Kilda 6-4-40 and I'm sure you'll find that Couch is reported for striking Owen. You're on Sevens Big League from Cardinia Park. You want to be a real footballer? I've been a real footballer. You've got to look like a real footballer. You've got to go for the mark. The VFL mark. Go for the mark. Go, go for the, the mark. mark. Go to the VFL Mark at leading stores. Real footy gear, real footy accessories. Real footy supporters gear too, in all club colours and badges. Go for the Mark, go for the Mark, go for the Mark. Go for the VFL Mark at leading stores. On Sevens Big League from Cardinia Park, Geelong. Geelong are leading. St Kilda, Geelong 7-8-50, St Kilda 6-4-40 and the ball about to be put forward by, uh, by Geelong with a hand pass coming out to Marty Christensen, he couldn't accept it, Jeff Cunningham's there for St Kilda with the ball in front of him, he heads toward the boundary line, Christensen took it from him, Neil breaks away, he's caught in possession, we've got a hand pass to Christensen who moves the ball in towards the half forward zone now, 40 metres out from goal, there's a chance here for the ball to be picked up and kicked by Elphinstone. It goes high. Chance for Hocking. Thumped away by Nixon. And we'll see a boundary throw in taking place 65 metres out from Geelong's goal. Well, uh, Geelong might have some trouble up on that back line if St Kilda can get it up there. They have Phil Narkel playing the forward pocket on Malarkey. Bit of a difference in the style of play there and the size, of course. Malarkey, a natural fullback, as we see Burns, who had a fairly ordinary first half, I thought. Backer comes towards centre wing. Ricky Nixon ducks the head in. He goes after it in Cunningham. And umpire Brian Sheehan comes in. And, and the umpires in the first half, Brian Sheehan and Ross Castle, did an excellent job. Yes, yeah, just prior to the half-time break, too, or right at the half-time break, umpire Sheehan informed Couch of Geelong that he'd been reported for striking Owen of St Kilda. So we'll see if that does eventuate. All taken away on this occasion. The hand pass came over to McConville. was shot out there by Jobling. The Convals kick, not a good one, goes straight to the opposition. Oh, eventually the hands of Lockett got to it, but he couldn't hold the mark. Been picked up again at the half-forward zone by Jobling. Peel got a hand pass away, but not before the umpire said holding the ball. Yes. Umpire Brian Sheehan, that was. Yes, and hasn't missed a trick right throughout the day. Brian Sheehan, is, uh, he deliberated on that one, and it was a correct decision to Bright. Down towards centre wing it goes, and is that out in the fall? No, it's a free ball. kick, said the umpire. Umpire Sheen again, deliberating. It's a free kick going to Robbie Mace. He's a tough little player. Oh, Raw an pass. ordinary looking kick as it goes straight to Shane Williams. And Williams, has, since coming on the ground, has tried really, really hard. Really put his body in as he brings it towards half forward. Marty Christensen in front. Can't take the mark. There's a secure player ducking the head. Keel gets it to Burns. Burns trying to crash his way through. He's got it too. Onto the left foot, he brings it wide. Malarkey from behind. Now, that's what I said. On this occasion, it worked to Geelong's advantage. Malarkey too big and strong for Narkel. Gives it across to Scratch O'Neill, who's having a great day. Paul Couch wanted to handball it. He still wants to. Now he elects to kick it towards half four. It's a shocking kick and straight to Robbie Mace. Robert Mace, not a good pass, the one before that. But he gets one moving up toward McConville again. McConville was brought to ground and not in possession. Should have been his free kick, but umpire Sheehan didn't play that one. Geelong coming back. And the mark has been taken as that jobbing again. A gamble. A gamble it was, getting the ball up toward the half-forward zone, but Big Burke in the way for Geelong. His hand pass finds Lenahan, who goes into the half-forward zone. The ball might come to ground oh. as St Kilda players mess it up between them. Grant takes a small kick off the boot of Mace. He gives it to Elphinstone. He thought of a kick, but had chosen the hand pass to Peel. Peel can go short. Oh, he, well, he forgot to make contact with that ball. <laughs> 
picked up by Robert Neal. Oh, Scratcher Neal having a tremendous day as he gets it out to Andrew Buse. Buse onto the left foot. He's looking for Turner, and that is a beautiful pass. Turner has kicked three goals, and he kicked one off the top of the knee that he thought was a goal, and the goal umpire deliberated and said that it was a point. Now, this will be a difficult kick. He should be able to lob it up around the goal area, but it would take a good kick from the 50, but he'll probably kick it from about 48 metres here. Michael Turner, as he kicks a high one, it floats back close to the line and it's forced through for a behind to Geelong. So the Cats, they move on to seven goals, nine, leading St Kilda, 6-4. Only 11 points between the teams, a very short pass from the full back position. Comes away and Cunningham kicks high in towards Grant. And a good mark taken by Grant. Up Played to, all right. Yeah, he's doing quite well. He's on the half-back zone for St Kilda now with 12th touch. With St Kilda going into attack now off the boot of Grant up toward Nixon who got into the back of the opposition. Couch is there. The player I said I think has been reported. Well done Jeff Cunningham. He took that away from three opponents then lost possession to the boundary umpire. So we'll see a boundary throw in taking place on the centre wing position on the members side. Well to be quite honest uh, Jack he was the only one who went for it. The Geelong blokes stood back and let Jeff Cunningham come through. And uh, well that's typical Cunningham style of course. Burke against Alistair Ford. Burke's been very dominant in the hit outs. There's Andrew Buse to cross the couch. Beautiful backing up. Over to Mark Boss. He's been an excellent player. An ordinary looking Touch. kick. It was that smoth smothered off the boot. Grabbed by Robbie Mace. A wobbly kick. Andrew Buse ducks back and Geelong looking far the better side at the moment is Buse. He brings it wide looking for Terry Bright. The ball doesn't sit for him uh, and he's quite happy to see it knocked over the line and out of bounds. How they throw and taking place on the centre wing position members side of the ground. Geelong leading St Kilda by 11 points. The ball about to be tapped down by the Ruckman. Burke got it down just about a throw by Neil to Buse. Buse got out of trouble nicely. Got a kick into the half forward zone. Mossop can't take it. Gamble's there to do the shepherding uh, for his teammates but they forgot to bring the ball forward. It's a chance for Daryl Cunningham. Oh. If that wasn't a throw I've got here. The kick by uh, McConville up towards Grant, doing well as we said before, but he's caught in possession. Umpire Castle said play on. This could come off the boot of Bruns and the mark has been taken at half forward by Schultz. So he's going to take a shot at goal, 50 metres out he is. The kick travelling toward goal, there's no one. Yes, it's going to be touched off the boot, it comes and Turner kicks it. Another goal for Geelong. So Geelong now leads and killed it by 17 points after Turner kicks his fourth goal. Well, Michael Turner... As we see the scoreboard, 8 9 57 Geelong to St Kilda, 6 4 40. But Michael Turner, as you see on screen, he's just been hovering around the forward line. He's been taking it off the pack and using his great experience and at times pace. But as I said earlier, I reckon another little man down there around uh, the big fella Mossop who's competing and contesting terrifically well down there. But they'd even be getting more goals on the board because Turner's using his great experience and he's kicked four. Here's a free kick for too high. It'll go to Geelong. Burke, I'm delighted to see him back and playing in the side. There is no doubt this guy is one of the best tap ruckmen in the league when he's firing, and he's certainly the best tap ruckman at Geelong, and that includes Mossop. Well, he's in the centre of the ground at present. He's not a good kick, although that one got off the boot all right. Funny-looking action. Ball to turf. Oh, that was nice raving too. This is going to be a goal, I think, of Whitkick. He kicked straight, and Whitcomb puts it through. That was a nice piece of raving by Whitcomb. that took that... He took that ball off the hands of the players in the pack and he kicked his second goal. Nice piece of football by Murray Whitcomb. Geelong 9-9-63, St Kilda 6-4-40. Now it's 23 points between the teams on Sevens Big League. Tremendous piece of play that by Murray Whitcomb. As Jack said, he read it beautifully off the pack. He straightened up, hooked it back and put it through. Whitcomb, uh, well, he's been around Geelong for a long time, but he played an outstanding game in the Armoury Reserve Cup game against Collingwood at the Lakeside Oval last week and thoroughly deserved to get back on the team. He hasn't let John Devine down because he's played a good game today. Yes, 23 points between the teams. The ball stuck in the centre of the ground and the umpire will bounce. 18 touches to, uh, 18 possessions to Murray Whitcomb. That's not bad in half a game. No, pretty good. He got another 18. He's had a great day, hasn't he? The ball now tapped out by Burke. A chance for Jobling to get it moving. Having trouble picking up at present, though. That's running away from him. He eventually does gain possession. A kick back to Ward Nixon. He can't quite get to the flight of it. Lenahan was there for Geelong. And the ball over the boundary line. So 63 playing 40. You're on seven's big league from Cardinia Park. Eight minutes into the third term. Well, St Kilda don't seem to be able to... Uh 
they have huge lapses where they go right out of the game and this is happening at the moment as we see Scratch O'Neill another possession a long a magnificent hand pass to Bright Bright down the centre of the ground kicks it eventually kicks it wide he could have gone down the centre as we see Hughes oh good use of the body by Hughes Marty Christensen playing with a free kick there oh good play Joffa Cunningham beautiful football over to John Collins Collins a hand pass it went straight to Cole now it's with Hocking Hocking to Marty Christensen and Christensen from half forward brings it down to Mossop almost took the mark he goes in after it again it's grabbed by Frawley Frawley to Alistair Ford Ford out wide to Jeff Cunningham who lets the ball go past him so as he can run with it now he's got it Joffa Cunningham he runs to half forward a little stab kick and he finds Tony Lockett on the half forward line you'll have to have this shot for goal he is a great kick of a football he'll kick from about 47 metres I would think Lockett going with his sixth kick toward goal from about the 50 metre mark on target is it long enough it sure is it's over the fence into the crowd a good goal kick by Lockett from 50 metres out so St Kilda not done with yet Geelong 9-9-63 St Kilda 7-4-46 and Tony Lockett has kicked his second goal out of that total of 7-4 well, Lockett wasn't doing much, Jack, at, uh, when he was at full forward, but uh, Jelly has moved him towards the end of the first qu second quarter, I should say, halfway through the second quarter, out the centre half forward, and he's left him there for the third quarter. Right, we'll see how he goes for the rest of the game. He's on Mark Boss, so he's not an easy opponent to beat. 63 playing 46, Geelong leading St Kilda. We're now 10 minutes into the third term on seventh big league. Burke couldn't get that tap out, but Couch eventually got it. Kicked out by Couch toward Hocking, giving chases Hocking, and we've got to get dragged down there. Hocking tried to tap the ball forward. Mace goes in for St Kilda, can't get it out, and we'll see a bounce taking place 60 metres out from Geelong's goal. I like uh, watching Hocking play, Jack. He's one of those old fashioned, tough little goers, and uh, well, he could have kicked about three goals in that second quarter. He had plenty of shots, and uh, well, didn't quite make the distance. There's Alistair Ford, the big leap. Grabbed by McConville, he hooks it back as uh, Paul Couch is playing. He's played better than Burns today, I, I reckon, in the centre of the ground as we see him bring it. And there's Joffa Cunningham. He's tried hard for St Kilda as usual. Hand pass to his, a bit of brotherly love there as uh, Daryl Cunningham brings it wide. Michael Cole with that great pace of his. A hand pass over the top to Buse. Buse caught. Throws the ball away. Could have been holding the ball there for sure, but I think the umpire, umpire Brian Sheehan, might have been unsighted by a couple of players. Yeah, well, Cole having a few words to say to Sheehan, and I don't know that he should be going crooked because it should have been a free kick against Geelong, mm -hmm. not to them. The ball being put down by umpire Sheehan now, right on the boundary line. Ford and Burke do battle, taken by Gotch. The kick going over the boundary line on the full, so it will be a free kick. Uh, Cole doing a bit of umpiring down there. He's having a few words to say, but Couch has the free kick for Geelong. Ross Castle, I could hear him saying, back you come, Burns. Uh, Burns just hasn't gone back very far, but Ross Castle still answer, asks the question. Couch putting it onto the boot now, dropping short. A mark will be paid to Cole. Looking for a hand pass to get it moving over to Andrew Buse. He has to change his thinking now and go in toward Turner. The ball is kicked high. It's with Schultz at half forward. He can't hold the mark. Oh, Gotch got his fingers and he kicked off there. The umpire hasn't paid anything, and we'll see a bounce taking place. Yes, and... Uh very rarely now do you see a kicking in danger decision. I think you have to actually kick the player to receive a free kick. If, if it misses him, well, there's no free kick. Well, that one actually got his hand, I think. Half forward, forward along. Mossop gets it down to the ground. This is Scratch and Neil having a tremendous day. Onto the left foot, he hooks it back. Which way will it bounce? The wrong way and through for one point to Geelong. So they've missed a lot of uh, kicks. Geelong have had uh, shots at goal, I should say. Geelong 9-10-64. Lead St Kilda, 7-4-46. Oh, this might go out without being touched. It's going to be a chance. I think it's out. Yes, yeah, Shepard it away. That was a bad play by McConville. He should have got to that. He could have touched that, I he thought. He should have got a bit to of that desperation. Ball. Yes, he lacked that bit of desperation. Now it's Neil to take this kick, free kick. The, the ball going out of bounds without being touched. That's from 20th the full back. to scratch kick in. Yeah, his 20th kick to uh, Robert Neal. He's got the ball about 35 metres out from goal now. Mace goes out of the pack as soon as he went in and the umpire has blown another decision up. It's going to be a bounce. At quarter time, Geelong with six goals straight. So in this, from quarter time, in the second quarter, they kicked one goal eight, Peter. So they didn't do well. And now they're nine goals ten. That's where you miss those class forwards, uh, Jack. As we see, 
right in front of goal. Here's Turner going, having another pot shot at the goal. <laughs> this time he's not happy because he's put it through for a point. Michael Turner, the opportunist down there, he's kicked four. On that occasion, a point brings uh, Geelong under 9-11. St Kilda on 7-4 as Alphonston brings it wide, looking for Burns against Couch. Oh, punched away. That's a 25-metre punch. It comes there to Bradley Gotch. Oh, this bad. is dangerous because it comes back into the play. A chance for Paul Couch. He's got it. He straightens up on the left foot. A funny-looking kick towards Paul Ford. The mark has been taken by Elphinstone. That was a good mark to Elphinstone. Two hand passes to Gotch, who had to get the ball to boot very quickly. Going back is Neil. Oh, oh. tackled a bit high. <laughs> I think that's the way to describe it. And uh, we'll see Neil take the free kick on the half-forward flank on the outer side of the ground. When he lost his head. He's 28 touch. That's an unbelievable That's a lot. That's a lot. We've only gone 14 minutes in the third quarter. Well, he's having, certainly having a good day, as Peter McKenna said. If you're looking for a lead here, or hopeful for someone can get a crumb. He's going for the long kick into position, and Mossop is trying to take the mark. Oh, Mossop got the hands up, but so did Schultz in front of him, his teammate. A big pack forming up here. The umpire having a look at it, and will it now Neville bounce. Neville Bruns is uh, not frightened to stick, put in the slipper. Not at the opponent, of course, oh, trying, no. to try, trying to kick the ball, but it, that's twice he's just lashed out and uh, gee, that could easily collect one of the opposition as we see the ball right in front of the Geelong goal and that's McConville kicking out wide to Burns. As I said, hasn't been dominant today. Burns kicks it wide to Ricky Nixon who marks on centre wing in front of Damien Burke. Long way from goal yet. He had to find someone up further afield. He's looking for Lockett. Can he find him? Boss doing the heavy work. Lockett got one hand to it. No, couldn't hold it. Nearly a free kick to Boss. Yes, holding the man will be paid. It was a good try by Lockett. He tried to get it on the second grab. Then Boss tried to mark it on the uh, third attempt of the umpire sort of free kick. So Boss bringing the ball downfield. Now Cunningham and Cole do battle. No mark to Cunningham. He breaks away quickly, looking for a short pass. Oh. You know, straight over the head of Keel and straight to Lenahan, who hand passes back to Boss. So Geelong doing it fairly easy from the half-back line. Couch again doing well. His hand pass goes out to Neil. Oh, he got hit hard. The ball play continues on the centre wing position and Robert Neil just about went out for the count. Well, a gutsy effort by Neil because Burns didn't even look at the ball as we see the ball kick down there to Whitcomb was from Burke. And I felt sorry for Neil then because there was no one on. He was the man who had the eyes on the ball. Burns didn't look at the ball and ran straight at him and tried to iron him out. And if that's football, I don't reckon it is. Well, he didn't try to iron him out. He did iron him out. Well, a gutsy effort by Robert Neil, Jack, to keep his eye on it. Well done. Now, Terry Bright takes the short pass from that half-forward zone. Neil over there, still in the hands of the trainers on the outer wing position. And the Bright, uh, Terry Bright will take the shot for goal from only about 30 metres out. There's Neil in the hands of the trainers after receiving a heavy knock from Burns. It was hip and shoulder, I think. I don't think there's anything else in it. No. But Peter McKenna wasn't too happy with what he saw. Well, there's the kick. What I'm trying to say is I've seen that happen a few times in league football where the guy is completely unprotected. The guy coming towards him, Jack, has got an opportunity to grab him holding the ball. Instead, because they know he's unprotected, they try and iron him out. Well, I don't agree with that. I don't care who it is. We see Schultz. I mean... When the opportunity is to catch a bloke holding the ball, I reckon that's what you should do, not try and knock him out because he's unprotected. Boundary throw in out of sight on the half-forward flank for Geelong as Peter McKenna has his few words to say. 66 playing 46 in favour of Geelong. We're on Sevens Big League and Burns hand pass finds Gotch. He kicks up towards Keel. Keel not good enough in the air to beat Burke. Burke gets it out to Cole. And Cole from the centre of Cardinia Park goes into the half-forward zone. It's dropping. Oh, good mark for the man in front, and that man in front is the ex-Carlton player, and a good mark to McConville. He goes out wide, finds Gotch. Ooh. 17th touch to McConville, doing quite well, but St Kilda forced into the short game. There was no one home for Gotch. Eventually, Cunningham made position. That's Jeff Cunningham. Now he goes straight across ground and finds a teammate, Collins, in the centre of the ground. Collins being harassed, getting a hand pass back to Gotch. They've had about four possessions, haven't done much with it. There's Gotch getting the ball up towards Lockett. He can't take the mark. Gave a free kick away to Neil, which wasn't paid. Narkel came in on the scene, trying to gain possession near the boundary. His hand pass back to Lockett. Lockett goes short, and a good pass, which hardly covered the distance, has been given to Nixon. Nixon going up fairly long, looking for Barker. He's going to try and get a fly. Can't do so. Chance for Burns over the back. Burns and uh, also Barker there. They have the ball with them, but now they lose possession to catch. 
and Couch doing well with a dangerous play. A hand pass from Lenahan finds Gary Malarkey who seems to play better away from the goals up there or took it too easily I thought and a uh, bit lucky he got the free kick and uh, took it a bit easily Marty Christensen then. It's in the halfway between halfback flank and the back pocket is Christensen. Nowhere to go, to he's give it to Well, why didn't he just kick it long? And that's what eventually he has to do. Towards centre wing, Lockett flies from behind. A good mark for Tony Lockett. It's, it's a long way down mark. the track, A 15-metre penalty. He doesn't take any notice of it. Kicks towards half-forward. Underneath it was Ricky Nixon. In they go at half-forward. Geelong looking a much more desperate team as we see Whitcomb into the back. Could have been. Grabbed there by Bruns. Straight up in the air it goes towards Bright. Down to the ground is Marty Christensen in the back. No, said the umpire. Play on as the players pounce in on top of it. And at the 19-minute mark of the third quarter, umpire Ross Castle was bouncing. That was great play by Jeff Cunningham there. He contested the mark. He hit the turf on hands and knees. He was after the ball. I thought it was great desperation by Cunningham, but he couldn't quite get the ball out to a teammate. Oh, Lockett used his weight there to get rid of Burke. Neil picks up, gets a hurried kick down towards Hocking. Mace, the free kick to Mace. He was being held. Peel got a hand pass out. Gamble couldn't make contact. Hawkins hand pass with a throw. It comes out to Ward Neal. Grant's about to give chase, but another opportunity for McConville. His hand pass comes back to Ford. Ford grabs hold of Schultz when he didn't have possession. The umpire evidently was blinded by the sun or he, something like that. He didn't see it. Hand pass from Bright comes back out to Grant. Grant with Burns, the only player uh, to whom he can go, and that's chopped off in the centre of the ground by Couch. His hand pass comes away and taken by Cole. He'll nice. gather pace now. And from half forward, he could chance another bounce if he wishes. He goes with the left foot into the forward pocket position. That's 30 metres out from goal. McConville defending well. Gets the ball out to Elphinstone. Back to Grant it goes. Grant can't take it. Nixon backs him up. But the ball's over the boundary line. You see a throw in taking place. Half forward flank for Geelong on the outer side. Geelong leading St Kilda by 20 points with the time clock. Just past the 20 minute mark of the third term. Well, one of the problems for St Kilda is the couch is absolutely dominating the centre of the ground. Here's uh, Buse picking the ball up, bringing it towards Mossop. Up he goes, down to the ground. Here's Mike Turner, he's got it. Brings it back to Whitcomb. Whitcomb gives it back to Bruns. Bruns straightens up and fires at the goal. It's a long floating kick. And I think he's put it through. He has, says the goal up by Geelong. Move further in front. That's his first goal. Little Neville Bruns, Geelong, they move on to 10-12, leading St Kilda 7-4. Well, Bruns has been in the game for, on 17 occasions, Peter. He's had possession of the ball, he did well on that occasion to get that uh, shot through. So 10-12, as Peter said, to 7-4. St Kilda seems to have stopped a bit. They're not doing much up past the half forward they zone, look, They look terrible, and uh, Narkle is up in that forward pocket. I don't know whether that's good... Well, the ball's you know, not even getting there. Well, they've it? got to get him into the action. Uh, up around the centre, scratch a kneel, another touch of the ball. That's about his 30th for the game. As we see Terry Bright down towards half. Well, that's a mark if he takes this because it was off his boot. No, said the umpire. Play on as uh, Mace brings it away after receiving from Keel. The big knock away there. Burke oh. is can he jump? There he is. Scratch a kneel, another touch of the ball. A lovely hand pass to Couch. Couch on the left foot to Neville Bruns and Bruns is marked on half forward and could be 15 metres. Oh gee, I saw something in there that could have been against him too. Bruns with the ball at half forward, getting his 15 metre penalty as Peter McKenna said. The ball kicked by Bruns into the forward pocket position. Mossop getting down to it but can't pick up properly and we'll see it run out of bounds just in front of Michael Turner. With Ge uh, Geelong in attack from their forward pocket position. Scoreboard showing 10-12-72 to 7-4-46. Geelong leading on the scoreboard and another chance of a goal here from this boundary throw-in. Peel couldn't take it, Ford in trouble, can't get a kick at the ball. Another chance for Andrew Buse, he tries to hook it away from the boundary line, that's close! Oh, that hit the post, it was a very good try by Andrew Buse, hitting the post on the way toward goal, and only one behind. And a big, great bit of shepherding uh, by Schultz too, nearly allowed that to go through. through. 73 plays 46, and there's a good mark to Peter McConville, who's trying well. very hard at half-back flank. And He's pass. had 20, 20 possessions. Yes, and doing well as we see uh, Elphinstone bring it towards half-forward. It's thumped away. Burns over the top. It allows Buse to come away with the football. Called on by Scratcher Neal. Buse runs down the ground. They're dominating play at the moment towards half-forward. That's a good mark. A lovely mark by the Geelong captain, Michael Turner. He is only 40 metres from goal, directly in front, and a chance to score his fifth goal of the game. But I think he kicked this one. Michael Turner. 
Dead in front of goal. I see Owen coming onto the ground and the play to go off is Gamble. I see Robert Neal being told to come off the ground too. So Robert Neal's had over 30 possessions being taken off. He got a heavy knock earlier. Turner's kicked toward goal. It's close, but I think he may have just missed it. Yes, it just drifted away. Only one behind. Yes, Robert Neal coming off and his position on the ground will be taken by Damien Drum. So he's been replaced. He received that heavy knock of which we spoke earlier and it looks like he might be going in for treatment into the rooms. Scoreboard showing 74 playing 46. Geelong leading St Kilda on Sevens Big League and the time clock getting toward the 24 minute mark of the third term. The kick from full back is out to Burke. They all, every player went to punch that. That's amazing. Not one went for the mark. There's Grant hooking it back towards the half-back line over the back. Geelong are reading around the packs a lot better than the Saints. Marty Christensen down towards... Uh, Let's see, that's Michael Schultz, couldn't control that one. Gee, he's putting his body in down there. Schultz, Cunningham has been an excellent player. Over to John Collins. Good mark. And that's uh, Andrew Jobling taking a nice mark in the centre of the ground. 15, 15 metres will go against Couch, but Jobling doesn't wait for that. He looks for Burns. Finds Lockett, who can't actually get to the flight of the ball. Has a chance to recover, though, in that mud patch. He picks it up and shoots it back to Burns. Burns' left foot kick is a hospital pass. Not a good one, and an easy mark to Lenahan. So 15 metres against St Kilda there uh, on that occasion. And Lenahan will come right down to the half-back zone. In fact, he doesn't wait for the 15. He goes short to Burke. Burke in two minds. Eventually gave the ball out to Boss. Boss does it so easily. Came through the half-back position and came into the half-forward zone. Schultz can't take the mark. Turner's there. Might have a shot for goal. He gives it over to Terry Bright. Terry Bright goes into the open goal. And Geelong look as though they've dropped the ball on a string. Doing it very easily at Cardinia Park. Right kicks his first goal. Geelong have kicked 11 goals, 14, 80 points. St Kilda 7-4, 46 on sevens big league. Good play, Michael Turner. He could have had the shot himself, but actually he wasn't in a position to take the shot. He could have straightened up and had it. He gave it to Terry Bright on the way through, and he popped it through for the 11th goal to Geelong. 17 possessions to uh, Terry Bright. As Jack said, unselfish play by Turner, he easily could have put it through for his fifth because he could have straightened up as we see it back towards uh, Ian Owen, or Rod Owen I should say Ian Owen of course used to play for Richmond many years ago, the kick out wide is on the full who was that by Jack? Or... Oh, that was Robert Mace kicked the uh, ball out Mace, there as we see on screen Murray Whitcomb taking this mark Whitcomb almost down towards the half forward line kicks a high one towards centre half forward over the back chance for Greg Burns lovely hand pass finds Ricky Nixon a beautiful hand pass to Daryl Cunningham he runs to the 50 metre line there's no one home now which way will it bounce it comes towards goal and that's a lovely goal by the St Kilda halfback flanker in Daryl Cunningham well, not a bad goal that's all set up there from Burns bringing the ball through the centre he gave it over to Nixon Nixon shot it out and the the kick uh, for a goal by Cunningham was on target. It bounced in the goal square and got through for a goal. So Cunningham has had, Andrew, 18 possessions, done quite well. 80 playing 52 on Sevens Big League. Geelong leading St Kilda. So there's 28 points between the teams here. 11-14 to eight goals for. Time clock getting toward the 27-minute mark of the third turn. At the bounce. Ford will oppose Burke. Burke dragged it down the arm. That was well done to Brunt. He let it roll down his arm straight into the hands of Brunt. Now to, oh, it was only a throw, or was it? Bright got a hand pass from Couch to Christensen. He ducked the head and caught in position. The umpire didn't penalise that. The kick going out of bounds, and we'll see a boundary throw in taking place on Geelong's half-forward flank on the members' side of the ground. The ground not in bad, Nick, after all the recent rains we've had. A few muddy patches, but you really can't complain, Peter, can you, about the no. state of the ground? No. We've handled the ball beautifully, but uh, Geelong seem to have far more determination than St Kilda do. I, I don't know whether St Kilda get a little bit resigned to the fact that they lose all the time, Jack, but I think this quarter has been really, really a disappointing effort by the Saints. Well, they shouldn't have done that, Peter, because they're only uh, six goals to 5-3 in the first term, and they're only three points in it. They're only ten points at half time, so uh, St Kilda really were in there with a chance. Buse tapped the ball back, Ford's there for St Kilda. The kick not a good one, straight back to Buse. Buse will go into the half-forward zone. Now he gave it to Bruns on the wing. Bruns goes into the half-forward zone. And McConville desperately uh, diving to take that mark. He's had a very good afternoon, Peter McConville. He's done well for St Kilda. The trouble is all their good players have been in defence, so which is not a good sign because the ball's always down there. 
and that's fair enough too. Here's Lenahan trying to pick it up. Can he do so before it goes out of bounds? Yes, he's gained possession. It was well tackled, and he eventually got the ball out again, but no one can take advantage of it. Jobbling on the left foot towards the centre of the ground. Damien Drum. Good oh, mark. that's a good mark. He's been one of their better players, David Grant. He's in the centre of the ground. He's uh, ruck roving today as he kicks that just as the siren sounds to end the third quarter here. And an excellent quarter by Geelong. They've moved on to 11 goals, 14, 80 to St Kilda, 8 4, 52. We start the final quarter at Cardinia Park, Geelong, with Geelong leading St Kilda, 11 14, 80 to 8 4, 52, a lead of 28 points. Burke got the tap out again. Drum's hand pass went back past his uh, intended teammate, and Boss picks up, kicking up to the half forward zone. Not a good kick. Comes straight back to Barker. That kick coming off the boot of Keel to Barker. Up to Burns it travels now. Burns hand pass over Jeff Cunningham. Can't take possession cleanly. He gets a hand pass back. To, meant for Burns, but he couldn't accept it. Not on the first instance. A good tackle robs Burns of possession. The ball on the turf. And Geelong looked like getting out of trouble. Half forward for St Kilda as we see Keel getting it down towards half forward where David Grant is it or Ricky Nixon? It Nixon is in it fact. Is. Nixon on half forward flank has taken the mark. He will kick from about 45 metres out by the time he comes over that yellow line here. The 50 metre line, actually white and yellow it is. So we see he kicked from about 48 metres with a booming torpedo punt. Lockett flies, nearly hooked it in. There's Malarkey. Hand pass over the top and through for one point to St Kilda. They have to really play a lot better in this quarter because uh, Geelong, since half-time, have been much the better side. 11-14, 80 Geelong to St Kilda, 8-5, 53. In the first term, or at quarter time, after kicking six straight goals, Geelong led by three points. They kicked one goal eight in the second term and only led by ten points at half-time, and now they've stretched that to 28 points at the three-quarter time break. Geelong trying to come forward now. Off the wing position, out of side. The player to set himself out there, can't take the mark. Malaka kicked the ball back, but Williams couldn't take the mark. Hand pass comes in again. There's a chance for Drum to put the ball into the goal square. The lead's up there. Turner can't take it. The umpire whistles up a free kick. Turner said it was tackled too high, and he will take the free kick from only 25 metres out. He made sure. <laughs> Mike Turner has kicked four, given a couple away, and uh, by heck, he made sure that the umpire <laughs> paid him that one. He lay on the ground. I don't think there was anything wrong with him, actually, but he did cop it high across the head. Just wanted to make sure the umpire saw it. But there he is, Mike Turner. He's, he's enjoying that at the this stage of his career in that forward pocket with his great skill and ability. He's kicking his goals each week. So he stabs at this one straight through the middle. Five goals to Michael Turner. A good captain's game. And Geelong moved further in front at the start of the final quarter. 12-14. A total of 86. Leading St Kilda, 8-5-53. Well, Turner's did, uh, he's done very well up there, Peter. 13 possessions and kicked five goals. So he can't really do a lot more than that as he said he did give a couple of way a uh, couple of goals away which he could have picked himself so Michael Turner having a good day as the Geelong Football Club is 12 14 86 with the lead of uh, 33 points over St Kilda but their their accuracy deserted them after quarter time as I said one goal eight in the in the second term and then in the third term they kicked four six St Kilda kicks five three one one and two goals respectively in the terms Trailing by 33 points with the time clock going towards the three and a half minute mark of the final term. Burke tapped it out beautifully, looking for a teammate, found one too. Couch got the ball moving, and this is one of St Kilda's better players, or possibly their best player, McConville, getting the ball out to Cunningham. That was Darryl Carr. Jeff Darryl Cunningham has it back again. Can't take it cleanly though. Might be a bounce over there, yes. The umpire comes in and said a bounce to take place. Halfway between centre wing and half forward flank, as we see Daryl Cunningham on screen rubbing his head as he copped one there and he races back to pick up Michael Turner. A pretty tough job, especially when the Geelong captains kicked five goals. They haven't uh, been on Daryl Cunningham, of course, as we see views a hand pass out wide to Cole. A high ball, oh gee, is danger again because Turner's at the back. The ball doesn't sit for him as it's grabbed there beautifully by Robbie Mace, he brings it wide, he's looking there towards half back to Trevor Barker, Barker is off, yes I thought he was off, could have been holding the ball eventually, it's in the back, uh, good decision but they're paying, umpire Sheehan doing the right thing, paying the advantage as Jobling comes away with the football down to Burns, Burns 
was about to hand pass to Alphonson, who's obviously been moved to the forward line. Burns a high one, looking for Lockett. Out he comes in front, can't take the mark. Kicked out, or thrown out of uh, defence, in fact. Grabbed by Gary Malarkey, handballs back to Lenahan, who's a very good player in defence, a much better player than he is up forward. Out wide it goes to Murray Whitcomb. Good to see uh, Murray back in that senior side. A great game last week in the reserves. And uh, obviously Geelong playing the policy of uh, putting up blokes who perform in the reserves. Well, why not, too? If they're in form, they should be played. Boundary throwing out a side wing position with Ford doing the ruck work against Schultz. No one really got the tap down cleanly. Ford did the tackling, but too high, the umpire said, and a free kick will go the way of Drum. Damien Drum of Geelong with the ball. He's being called by Mossop up in the forward pocket, but the kick won't travel that far. It goes up to the half forward flank where Whitcomb has taken the mark, the player of whom Peter McKenna, uh, McKenna spoke only moments ago. Begos, 23rd touch to Whitcomb. Trying to get his 24th then to get the rebounding hand pass, but didn't eventuate, and the umpire will bounce. Yes, half forward flank. And I'd like to see St Kilda get a couple of quick goals to make the game more interesting because four goals, nine behind they are. And, uh, well, that's a pretty good lead at this stage because Geelong are playing well and St Kilda, well, they've just got no system or they seem to have lost that real zip that they had early in the game because they started off enormously well with about five quick goals. Yes, yeah, so the first quarter was very good indeed, but they've fallen away since then. Geelong's taken over. The ball tapped down to... Uh, came out toward views, but he couldn't expect, uh, uh, take advantage of it. Cunningham's kick, not a good one. Mace with the sun on his eyes. Tackled by Hocking. Hocking worried him out of possession on that occasion. He has the ball, goes for a little pass around the corner. Cool. Jeff Cunningham got up high. The ball comes to turf. He's a competitor to that Cunningham, I'll tell you. Hand pass comes away. Marty Christensen back to Hocking. Hocking goes short into the forward pocket, and he's found a teammate up there, and Damien Drum will take the kick. So Drum's in the forward pocket. A 15 metres against McConville too, which he didn't agree with. And the, player that the umpire to give that decision was umpire Brian Sheen. I didn't really see 15 in that, but he did. And that's the main thing. Well, he's got a kick for the left-hand goal post. We're having a look at this with a camera shot almost behind uh, Damien Drum. Now, that left-hand goal post, and if he kicks it to that, it should swing in because there's a slight breeze going across. He kicks at it. No, oh, is that just in? Yes, just sneaks in for a goal. So that'll make it very, very difficult for St Kilda now. A goal to Damien Drum, his first. Geelong move on to 13-14, 92, leading St Kilda, 8-5, 53. Yes, at Cardinia Park today, there isn't a very big crowd. Uh, not because the teams wouldn't draw, but uh, I suppose that's one thing really. But uh, the Geelong supporters couldn't get here because of the petrol strike. And would only be a crowd of round about, or I'd have an estimate, no more than 15,000 here at uh, Cardinia Park. I'm no expert on crowds here, but there's not many people in attendance. The ball being put down by umpire Castle. Burke, no decision there. Drums, hand pass comes out to Couch, who's done well in the centre. Going back to take the, the mark is McConville. McConville hand passes on to uh, Cunningham. He gets it out to Nixon. He's looking for somewhere down the flank to go. He kicks high in the general direction of Elphinstone, but Boss beats him to the flight of the ball, and Boss takes the mark on half back. He comes into the centre looking for Burke and finds him. He hand passes straight away. Over to Couch. Couch with a hand pass to Whitcomb. Those two players have been very good across the centre. Geelong centre line been well on top today as uh, Couch comes away again. A low kick up towards half forward with Turner is caught behind Cunningham. Hocking, geez, a goer. He's a real goer. Normally a back pocket player. That was thrown away by Ford. Back it comes to Couch. He's got it too. Uh, playing well, Paul Couch. He brings it towards for the forward line where the mark has been taken by Michael Turner. He wanted to go. He wanted to go. Now he might be just a little bit too far out. If he gets onto it, it'll be a goal, but he's going for the torpedo punt. It's a shocker. Up to the goal square. Over the back is Mossop. Taps it down to the ground. And eventually it's forced through by Peter Keel for a behind to Geelong. So, well, you can see by the scoring shots, Geelong have been the better side. 13 goals, 15-93. Leading St Kilda, 8-5-53. Now from the full back position, the ball would be brought down, straight down the ground, I thought. No, Nixon's changed his mind. He's going out to the outer side flank. Buse under the ball to take the easy mark. Completely uncontested, Andrew Buse. Too far out to score. It'll be 60-odd metres out. So he'll be kicking up to the forward pocket. Turner did lead, but that's been ignored. The kick, Oof. not a bad kick up toward the 
goal square to mark has been taken there by big John Mossop. Well, <laughs> the law of averages said he had to take one. He's gone for so many marks there today against Frawley, and the ball, he's been spoiled every time. He's done, he's battled hard, John Mossop, and he's got the ball to the ground of the little of blokes, but on that occasion, well, I reckon the law of averages said he had to take one. Right, does he have to kick a goal then, Pete? Well, it's right in front, Jack. He's only 25 metres out directly in front. Normally a pretty accurate kick. He stabs, floats, and it's another one to the cat. So they're finishing on beautifully, which will please John Devine. They've moved on to 14-15, leading St Kilda 8-5. That's a good one behind the goals. Field up for action. Well, not too many people have been filled up today. I mean, for our petrol strike, but evidently Geelong have, going by the sign behind the goals. 99 playing 53. 46 points between the teams on Sevens Big League. We've now approaching the ten and a half minute mark of the final term. Well, St Kilda appear to have lost all fight, Peter, to me. Not much there in the in the tank at all, to use those terms today. Burke got it down, tried to follow it through, tried to get a hand pass away. Nixon's hand pass, not a good one. Elphinstone can't gain the kick. Been kicked up by Boss to the half forward zone. Chance for McConville, couldn't take it. Darrell Cunningham jumps in. He can't get it out. We'll see a bounce taking place 45 metres out from Geelong's goal. Geelong early in the game, uh, missing Ablett and uh, Brownless and those good forwards terribly. But uh, luckily for them, Turner's had a good day kicking five goals and they've been able to capitalise up there because they've had uh, most of the play. There's Cunningham. He wanted to play on. He's trying to get a bit of system going into the side is kicked off the ground by Bright over the line but he's tried his heart out uh, Jeff Cunningham you give him 100% marks for effort yes and Devery had as I, I mentioned him before if they all had the go of Jeff Cunningham they'd certainly be a team of goers uh, the ball up high comes the back taken by Owen Owen of St Kilda being called in the centre of the ground by Jobling the kick doesn't go in that direction though comes down towards Boss Burns is there now one can get it away cleanly he got hand passed out on that occasion. A little kick from Elphinstone to Burns. Burns tries to hook it around the corner. Grant's there, but he's outgunned. And the mark taken by Malarkey. He hand passes away to Cole. Cole brings the ball up the centre of the Cadenia Park. Finds Burke. Burke would have been looking for a hand pass too, but he can't get one away. He's got a few people going past. Eventually he got a hand pass to Boss. Do they love a hand pass, Pete? Do they ever? There's Hoyles receiving up towards Schultz. Tried to hook it in with the one hand. Rod Owen battling towards the boundary line and uh, over the line it goes before Hocking could get to it. It's right in front of the commentary position here on the true centre wing position as we see Schultz coming in to do the ruck work. Lockett has been all over the place today. Centre half forward, ruck, full forward and uh, he must be totally exasperated, Tony Lockett. He does not seeing enough of the football. There's Couch who's had an excellent day. Hand pass back to Bright. Bright with a wobbly old kick, but it lucks a fortune. It's a free kick down the field and the mark, so it didn't matter. Schultz. Now he'll probably look for Big Mossop. Turner's ducking back there. No, he's not going to go short. Oh, ordinary looking one over the back is Couch, who read it beautifully. Couch a stab kick, and he finds the captain, Michael Turner. Now a chance to kick his sixth goal from about 35 metres out, 45 degree angle, and Darrell Cunningham. He had ducked back expecting the long kick was caught out and the, the look of disappointment on his face the camera showed everything then Malarkey coming off to give young Peter White a go as we see Turner for six goal it's floating across the face and through for one point so Michael Turner's kicked a couple of behinds today as well as the five goals 14-16 the Cats and Kilda 8-5 Danny Frawley from full back torpedo punt didn't work really as well as he would have liked. The ball came to the half-back position. Chance for Buse to get a hand pass to Hocking. Hocking gets it to Turner. The goals are open for Turner. He got tried for a hand pass. He shoots on the left foot. That's a good goal kicked by Michael Turner after missing the previous shot. He had an opportunity and tried to get a hand pass over to a teammate. Couldn't do so. The rebounding ball came back to him and the left foot shot was true. Turner kicks his sixth goal. Six out of 15. 15-6. 106 is the Geelong total. St Kilda, eight goals, 5.53 on seven's big lead. Well, uh, as I said, the Geelong captain Turner, he's really relishing that forward pocket position because he's got such good skill and he's been very unselfish, Jack. He's yes. given a couple of goals away and on that occasion tried to give another one away but it rebounded back and he got his sixth goal, so he deserved it. There's Burns on the left foot. They can't get it past that half forward line. Now they do. 
Michael Cole. Gee, what's happened to Narkel? He's still freezing down that forward pocket. Here's a chance for Little Gotch. A long hand pass as he finds uh, Alphonston. He has a pot shot at the goals and he slammed it through for an easy goal to the Saints. Well, it was an easy goal. They haven't had many of those, have they? Elphinstone popping the ninth goal through for St Kilda. And it's certainly a change in that team, which uh, at quarter time were five goals three. That was at quarter time then. They're only nine goals five. So they haven't done much in the other three parts of the game. 9-5, 59 to 15, 16, 106 on Sevens Big League. Rather disappointing, Peter, because the way they started the game, oh. I thought they could have given Geelong a run for their money. Well, it looked a, it was a great game in the first quarter. I think you'd agree, Jack, a very, very even game. In fact, if anything, St Kilda probably looked a bit the better side in the first 20 minutes. But since then, if Geelong had a kick straight, it would have been all over bar the shouting. Even as it is, 15-16... That's what's that, uh, 31 scoring shots to 14, that's a bit of a hiding. Yes, Pete, it is certainly a bit of a hiding when you look at it that way. The ball bounced in the centre with Burke and Lockett doing battle, tapped out toward Whitcomb, Whitcomb got a hand pass, that was nearly a throw. There's a chance now for St Kilda to come forward, but no, Buse is going to turn that around. He's going to pick up and go for a short pass into Ward Hocking. He can't take the mark, in comes Cunningham, having trouble picking up, he's running the ball the wrong way, tackled by Turner, could have been nearly holding the man, it's in the back, the umpire is ruled, and a free kick to Jeff Cunningham. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, two terrific players, Michael Turner and uh, Jeff Cunningham there, and both giving everything for their size, and Cunningham still battling his guts out, even though it's getting towards the end of the game and they can't win it, boy, he's trying as he gives brotherly love again. Well, Over to going? his brother Darrell, who doesn't know where to go. go on, Out wide ground. to Peter McConville. McConville, they gain nothing there except that McConville was loose. He gives it there to Peter Keel. Keel onto the left foot, looking down there for Burns, who's unattended. And Greg Burns in the centre of the ground, a hand pass to Robbie Mace. Mace over to Trevor Barker. Barker, a high ball, right up towards full forward. They're ducking back. Could be a mark to St Kilda. No, as little Gotch goes in after, but I think it was over the line and threw, threw for a point to the Saints. That takes them under nine goals, six. Total of 60. Trailing Geelong, 15-16, 106. 46 points between the teams as we get to the 17-minute mark of the final turn. The kick in favours Christensen, and he takes the mark nicely. Played well. The half forward flank. Yes, he got out of it a little bit uh, in the latter part of the third quarter and, and in this turn. So there's the kick into the centre of the ground. Mossop sets himself. Owen went to spoil. Owen gained possession. His hand pass came out of the pack to Elphinstone, who gave it back to Jeff Cunningham. He goes into the forward pocket of Travels. Can't find a teammate. Foyle's coming out of the back pocket. Gets a small kick around, and the mark has been taken by Jeff Cunningham, is it, on the outer side. He plays on quickly, too. Gave it out to Burns. 50 metres out from goal. Burns lets fly toward goal and Lillian pushing push in the back against Gotch. The umpire is going to award the mark to Bradley Gotch though. <laughs> oh, gee, How could he mark over Linehan? Honestly, well, I think the, in, in the little, back. Yeah, just a little nudge where the umpire couldn't see it. And Bradley's so small, I don't think uh, the umpire could possibly uh, see who there was anyone there even, Jack. Well, I reckon it was a nudge in the back. And the yeah, Gotch, I agree with you. Yeah, and Gotch, he got, got away with it. So right in the goal square, Brad Gotch will try and kick his fourth goal, is it? Yep. Yes, he's got three to his credit. Up it goes, through for a goal, and St Kilda, with that goal to Gotch, move their score on to 10 goals, 6, 66. Still 40 points behind Geelong's total of 15, 16, 106. Well, there he is, Bradley. He's tried very, very hard, and he's... Uh, I think he's more of a forward pocket player than a round-the-ground rover. I think you'd agree, Jack. He's kicked four, but hasn't done a lot round the ground. But I can't understand why Narkel's down there uh, freezing. He may not be as fit as we think he should be, Pete. Uh, he might be uh, suffering from the effects of the state game on Tuesday when he played so well on, uh, on that wing against Robert Dippier Domenico. He did so. His uh, blocker trying to barge away from the centre but couldn't do so. The hand pass <laughs> uh, from Boss came to Drum, who shot it back to Christensen, who shot it back to Drum, and now he puts it upfield, and the mark has been taken only 40 metres out from goal and the shot will be taken by Williams. Williams of Geelong, 40 metres out, trying for Geelong, 16th goal. They are now 15-16. He's gone for a short pass until he got the umpire, but eventually found its mark, and the mark right. has been taken by uh, Hocking. Hocking. Well, I'll tell you what, if he kicks like he did in the third, in the first, second quarter, it was he had about four shots from that position and missed them all. This time it looks a lot better. And he's put it through for a lovely goal. So... Fourth time lucky for Steve Hocking. He'll be delighted being a back pocket player normally. 
and that's uh, Geelong 16. 16 goals, 16. 112. Leading St Kilda, 10-6, 66. We're getting toward the 19 and a half minute mark now, the final term on Sevens Big League from Cardinia Park. Been a good day for football after all the bad weather we've had. Not a bad day at all here at Geelong. The ball being put down in the centre. 1-1-2 one, one, playing 66. Lockett beaten. Jobling's hand pass not good to Owen. Owen tried to get it back to Lockett. Lockett picks up, tries to barge his way through again. Did that with some success too. The hand pass comes out to Cunningham. Cunningham goes for a little pass into Gotch and Gotch takes the mark. Could be 15 metres there too. And whether the umpire will apply that or not, Gotch had taken the mark before he got some treatment. He was pushed in the back and the umpire is bringing the offending player back to 15 metres. Yes, yeah, a very short 15. If that's the correct terminology. Well, it wouldn't be 15 then if no, it's short. <laughs> it would not. It's supposed to be a 15 metre penalty but far from it. So Gotch going for his fourth goal. Kicked one only moments ago. Normally a fair shot at goal. That one has got through, I think. Yes, another goal kicked by Bradley Gotch in the uh, in the final term. He's kicked his fifth goal, not his fourth goal, his fifth goal. So St Kilda, 11-6, 72. Still trailing by 40 points to Geelong on 16-16, 1-1-2. Yes, and as I said, he's a dangerous little player, uh, Bradley Gotch, around the goals. But... Uh, uh, and a handy play to have down there because their key forwards aren't kicking goals uh, at the moment. Jack, so they need someone long. to kick them. He kicks fairly well, long. Well, his skills too. are great too. He is a hand and foot skills are fantastic, but probably round the ground uh, doesn't do a heck of a lot now. Bradley Gotch, as we see, Damien Drum, by heck, he's a goer. Hasn't had the, hasn't been outstanding, but every time he goes in after it, he usually gets it because he's a tough, strong player. At the bounce again, Mossop comes in against Lockett. Mossop got the tap down. Grant can't take it. Barging his way through on that occasion was Collins, who gave it out to Cunningham, still doing well. The kick, not a good one on this occasion, finding the boundary line. Now, Jeff Cunningham must have had a 24 possessions Jeff Cunningham has had this afternoon, so he certainly contributed towards the, the St Kilda effort, but the effort hasn't been good enough. 40 points the difference between the teams. Mossop. Tried to take the ball in from the boundary throw-in. Wasn't successful. It gets shot out of the pack, but the umpire once again has said a bounce will take place. We do believe there's a report in this game. Just prior to the half-time siren, Couch of Geelong appeared to be reported for, uh, I think, striking... Who was the player he struck, Pete? Uh, I think it was... Uh, Owen. Uh, Rod Owen. Yes, that's right. That was Elphinstone getting the ball down. It might have been touched off the boot because the umpire called play on. There's Mark Boss. He's well, he's been very, very steady today. On this occasion, though, he puts it out of bounds on the full, but he's uh, just a reliable player, isn't he? Never puts in a real bad game and never looks outstanding. Oh, there. Bright right, went, went for the big one. Could have been a free kick to early. Burns, but it wasn't paid. Burns gains possession. Playing runs better now, Burns. Yes, he's playing a lot better now. He gets the ball, a ball moving down to the full forward zone, taken by Cole. He hand passes out to Couch. Couch looking up toward Bruns. A good pass, too. Finds that player. And it will be nearly a 15-metre penalty against Keel. The hand pass comes over to Buse from Bruns and looking for Williams. McConville's there and steadying mark taken by Peter McConville. Played well. He has played very well. His hand pass to Darrell Cunningham. Hand pass over to Barker. Barker's left foot kick, not a good one, but can it find a teammate? Grant can't take it cleanly. Tapped on by Barker again, taken by Marty Christensen. A slick hand pass comes out to Drum taken by Williams, Williams now bringing the ball, I thought to bring it straight back across the centre, chipping in as Cunningham took it from him, Elphinstone picks up hooks it back in the direction of Cunningham take it here by Nixon, given to Burns Burns looking for a leader by Jobling but Narkel takes the mark, thought of playing on, will go back now and take a short pass into Jobling I think, now he's changed his mind, he goes very short to Gotch no mark, a touch the ground, Gotch dragged off the football when a hurried hand pass comes out and Couch gains oh, possession. He's had a great day there. That was funny. He looked up, ball Couch looked up, and the only player he could see was Young Low, number 50 for St Kilda, you see on screen. So he did the old wobbly punt kick, knowing full well it ahead for the boundary line. So good thinking by Paul Couch. Centre bounce, or not centre bounce, centre wing throw in, I should say. We see Danny Frawley 
We've had a lot of their top players playing ordinary games today, uh, St Kilda. Nixon across to Burns, who's really firing now. Over to Joppa Cunningham, a beautiful hand pass to little Bradley Gotch. He swings around on the left foot, kicks it high, won't make the distance, the lock back. it. Oh, good mark. It wasn't in the back, said the umpire. Oh. Jack thought it was. <laughs> and uh, oh, against did. Mossop, in fact, the fact that he even reached over him, he must have pushed him in the back, I think. Oh, gee. And Lockett has paid the mark about two, one metre out on a 45 degree angle so Tony Lockett a chance to kick goal number three. Oh gee he might be a bit lucky there that's too doubtful one we've seen down there. The crowd aren't uh, too happy about the situation either but the ball on its way and the umpire indicates another goal to St Kilda this time kicked by Tony Lockett for his third goal. Geelong 16-16 1-1-2 St Kilda 12-6 78 on sevens big lead. There's the man on screen now He's had a pretty frustrating day, Peter. I think he is totally frustrated. And I, I think, you know, with a guy of Lockett's ability, it was a very good full foot. I think you would get frustrated when you're playing in a low side. You hardly win a game. You just don't see... It's easy to play full forward in the top side when the ball's been belted down every two minutes. It's not hard to get a kick, but it's hard for Lockett because it just doesn't come down the amount of times it does in top clubs. Nine kicks he's had, Tony Lockett. Well, Lowe got the ball out of the centre. Up toward the half-forward zone. Now we can do much with it. Comes out toward Whitcomb and Drum. Drum burst away with it, but the umpire has recalled it. We'll see a bounce taking place about five metres on the attacking side of the centre line for St Kilda. So it's St Kilda slightly in attack. We're into time on two by just over half a minute on Sevens Big League. The final term from Cardinia Park. Geelong 16-16, 1-1-2. Oh, kick out. St Kilda 12-6, oh. 78. <laughs> oh, the young low just kicked him. Kicked him straight out of the contest. Then uh, Damien Burke, who had no chance, and the other guy just ignored it. But I don't know how he ignored that one. He had no chance. Burke, who is a terrific... Let's see if he does it again. No, I didn't do it on that occasion. There's Narkel diving in on top of the ball. 16-16 to 12-6. They're trying hard, the Saints, as we see John Collins having a pot shot. Now, he should mark this locket. He's marked it over the back of Hoyles. I turn look, it's going to end up with about five goals here. This is his fourth coming up, and he doesn't seem to have been in the play at all. So maybe Geelong just relaxing slightly. Well, that they could be, Peter, because the ball has got... Oh, Collins got the ball down well to Lockett. Yeah, good play. That, that, that's the advantage of a, one long kick, too, from the centre of the ground, straight down to the full court. Lockett, from only a few metres out, has popped it through for another goal to St Kilda. So St Kilda... On the scoreboard are 13 goals, 6, and Geelong 16, 16. That's 1-1-2, one, one, playing 84. You're on Sevens Big League with the time clock approaching the 27-minute mark of the final term. And uh, the Geelong runner, Mickey Grapsis, is... Can't see him on screen at the moment, but he is running out to speak to a couple of Geelong players. Obviously, John Devine will be telling him to concentrate, concentrate, because... We're at the 27-minute mark of the final quarter, and maybe they've just relaxed a little bit, or St Kilda are finishing on. They started the quarter at 8-4, St Kilda, so they've moved, kicked five goals for the quarter, so, you know, maybe they've got off the boil a little bit. There's umpire Brian Sheehan coming in to bounce it. The umpires have done a great job today, Brian Sheehan and Ross Castle. By the way, Geelong have kicked five goals, two for the quarter also, so it's been a ten-goal quarter. Similar to the first quarter. Yes, Clear. it was. Oh, Burke, big bump, cleared the pack. White tried to get it out for Geelong, but couldn't do so. Oh, <laughs> Damien Trump came barging through, tried to take all before him, but finished up on his backside. And we'll see a bounce taking place still within the square. This time it's on Geelong's side of the centre square, on the, uh, the centre line. Burke once again got the thumb down toward Cunningham. Cunningham came back into the pack to try and go possession. And once again, we'll see a bounce taking place within the centre square. Quite a few players out there. Look like Burke may have hurt himself. He's holding his right knee. Whether that's damaged, then I'm not too sure. And see him just on the bottom of that picture there. So Burke getting treatment as, he, as Brunch tries to move the ball away from his big pack of players around the centre. And the umpire has found a free kick, and it will go the way of St Kilda. Trevor Barker, and there's uh, Damien Burke limping around he's been excellent in the ruck today he's controlled those centre bounces he's hung around the half back line some of his punch aways have been as good as kicks Damien Burke and look I honestly believe and I know a lot of people at Geelong reckon that he's going to be one of the top ruckmen in league football that kid he's been unlucky with injury he's got an enormous amount of potential right let's hope he doesn't meet the fate of a few other Geelong ruckmen down here Peter the ball being hurried out by Collins down toward the half forward zone I Thought Elphinstone was being held there. It came shoveled out to Cole. 
Cole on the left foot, looking around the half forward flank position. Williams going back, a free oh. kick against McConville, not bad. Oh. The Geelong fans don't like that. This time McConville gets the free kick. Oh. <laughs> Unbelievable, because how could he miss that one? I don't know. I've given the umpires a rap. You give them a rap and they let you down, uh, Jack. That was a definite free kick. It should have been paid. There's Ricky Nixon ducking back. It was too high for him. Here's Damien Drum. He only knows one way, and that's straight ahead. Oh, <laughs> a blind turn over to Couch. Oh, cleverly done, Paul Couch. Off he goes. He should have kicked it. He tried to give the hand pass. There's Barker. Barker breaks away and hooks it wide. A chance for Phil Narkle, who's been starved of opportunities down there. He brings it down there, looking towards a Big Lockett. He's got it, Tony Lockett. Now he has. He crashes his way through. This is a great performance by Lockett. That deserved a goal. But he's offline, and Jeffrey Cunningham, as Mark runner, runs around, stabs at the goal, and he's missed. Well, I'd like to have seen Cunningham kick that one because he's been a great try right from the start of the game. Yes, he's been. 25 possessions to Jeff Cunningham. He's done very well indeed, as Peter McKenna said. 1 1 2 playing 85 on the scoreboard. Geelong are leading, and Bright will kick in from fullback. There won't be much time left. We've been playing in excess of 30 minutes now the kick from Bright finds its mark and is taken by Boss finds its mark, that's very well done Mark Boss with the ball, into the, the centre of the ground up toward the skipper and uh, it looks like he might have played uh, Barker, Trevor Barker Peter, he's not the player we knew a couple of years ago, is he Trevor? No, well he's getting uh, a lot older now of course and uh and when he was at his top, but he's still got a big heart, of course. But he made his name really as a back man, didn't he, uh, Jack? That was his best football on the back line. And he, he's had a lot of injury too. Yep, I'll say he has. Broken leg, had all sorts of uh, injuries, Trevor Barker. As we see, Peter Keel with a wobbly kick. There's the siren, it won't be a mark to Lockett. No, the umpire said no. After Lockett took a very good mark. But there's the end of the game here at Cardinia Park. Geelong comfortable winners. 16-16, 112 to St Kilda, 13-7, 85. You want to be a real footballer? I've been a real footballer. You've got to look like a real footballer. You've got to go for the mark. The VFL mark. Go for the mark. Go, go for, for the mark. mark. Go for the VFL mark at Meyer. Real footy guernseys, real footy shorts, and real supporters wear jumpers in all club colours and badges. Go for the mark. Go for the VFL mark at Meyer. In what was the closest of the three games played today, Geelong doing it well in the closing stages to run out 16-16, 112 to St Kilda, 13-7, 85, a 27-point margin, and at last, coach John Devine has something to smile about. He would have been smiling with his skipper performance today. Mick Turner finished the day with six goals, Murray Whitcomb two, whilst Bradley Gotch for St Kilda was their main contributor with five, and Tony Lockett four. Sadly for both sides, though, as far as positions on the Premiership ladder are concerned, it does very little because the Saints remain in 12th spot on the ladder and the Cats in 10th. But they do have a chance to move up in the weeks to come. If they do, we hope that you can be part of that action here on Pro Football.